podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, March 27th, 2021. This is episode 1782. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Babbel. Babbel has made learning new languages fun and easy with bite-sized lessons you'll actually use in the real world. Purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months free. Go to babbel.com and use the promo code TECHGUY. And by Udacity. Build your tech skills through industry-leading programs created and recognized by top companies worldwide with a nano degree from Udacity in as little as 12 weeks. Visit udacity.com slash twit. Use the coupon code twit at checkout. You'll get 50% off through May 30th, 2021. And by Conga. Experience Conga's new brand and have some fun by testing your trivia knowledge. They'll be donating to a charity that supports COVID relief efforts. Go to conga.com slash twit today. Why, hey, hey, how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. It's time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, you know, the drill, all the technologies that are changing our lives. Smartphones, gosh, that's that's good. that should be number one on the list, shouldn't it? Smart watches. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number 888-827-5536. That's the phone number if you want to talk high tech with me. If you want a question answered or a point to make or a suggestion, 88 or a correction, 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Website, techguylabs.com. Techguylabs.com. That's easy because, uh, you know, it's me. I'm the tech guy, and it's my laboratory, techguylabs.com. And in there, you'll find every uh, bit of the show. Not only the, uh, you know, answers to questions and the links and all that, thanks to James DeRuvo, our scribe, but we actually put the show up there, the audio and the video from the show up there, uh, after the fact, later, later this week. So you can go there if you're, you know, if you hear something, you go, oh, what? You know, I got to remember that. Don't worry. You don't have to. It's all there and there's a good search. Oh, and there's no charge either. It's wide open. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, let's see. Update. Just I might mention a quick update to your iOS devices, your iPad and your iPhone. If you use one of those, you should probably update it. Kind of a flaw, a critical security flaw that may have been actively exploited. Oops, that sounds like uh, what we technically call a zero day. <sighs> Somebody was using it before it was discovered and then it was discovered and now they're fixing it, but who knows? I don't know. A cross-site web kit vulnerability. It's, they say thing could allow a malicious website to um, what to get into your phone to to, to maybe uh, pretend that it was uh, your bank you know or maybe while you're at your bank kind of log what happened that kind of thing yeah that's the kind of thing so that's not so good fourteen point four point two. Or if you have an older iPhone, 12.5.2. But it's worth uh, fixing. I always like to mention those right up front. So you do those. Those are, you know, and again, I want to always make the distinction. There's feature updates, which you don't need. You know, oh, a new button look or something like that. Who cares? But there's patches, security fixes you absolutely do need. And you should always do those right away. Um I always when I when I read about this, I always go around to whatever devices, you know, my iPad, my phone, and get those updated. Important, important work you're doing to protect yourself and not just yourself to protect others. Got to got to do both, right? If you don't if you don't patch your computer, you could be uh, you could be used to attack other computers. Oy. Chrissy Teigen quits, quits the Twitter. Quits the Twitter. She says, I've had enough. You don't see... Um, you don't see a lot of people with 
1.7 million followers on Twitter quit. She says, after years of harassment, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, why put up with years, you know? <laughs> but she says she deleted thousands of tweets, blocked more than a million Twitter accounts last July after ongoing harassment. She says, Twitter no longer serves me positively, as positively as it serves me negatively. I think it's the right time to call something. Yeah, yeah. She was, Twitter named her the unofficial mayor of Twitter. <laughs> the mayor is resigning. Apparently, I guess it's partly it's because of QAnon, right? Supposedly, Chrissy Teigen and her husband, John Legend, were part of a <laughs> non-existent pedophile ring running out of a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. So, uh, the nut jobs are out there. For years, she tweeted, I've taken so many small... Two follower count punches that at this point I'm honestly deeply bruised. What she's saying there is people are creating accounts. We know they're created because they only have a follower or two, usually themselves. And uh, then, you know, using those accounts to attack her. And this is a problem for Twitter. It really is a problem for Twitter because they, uh, it's so easy to create an account. Anybody, anybody can do that. So... You know, it doesn't, it's not a good look for Twitter. Jack, Jack Dorsey, the, the head of Twitter, was testifying in front of Congress this week. <laughs> As were uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google. You know, one of those uh, investigations into big tech, in this case, into abuse, ironically, on big, on big tech platforms and, <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> uh, in this case... Um, Really, almost always this happens when Congress is talking to these guys. They just show they don't know what the hell's going on. They're just confused. They're just confused. They don't understand how technology works. <laughs> they don't understand how this stuff works. It's uh, it's always kind of, well, just a little embarrassing. That's, that's all. New job, uh, speaking of embarrassing, for Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Hello, Duke. He, you know, he's the one with Meghan Markle. They left the royal family. So you got to get a job, right? You're not part of the firm, the royal family. You got to get a job. Got to get a, get a, make a living. He's, uh, he's uh, taken uh, a job with a uh, startup called Better Up. Better Up Inc. It's, uh, it, he's going, his official, his official title uh, at Better Up Inc., is a chief impact officer. It's a mental health uh, startup. So I'm not, you know, that's good. No knock. I guess it's counseling and stuff. No knock on that. That's good. But uh, I'm glad he's got uh, work. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm not feel. I'm feeling a little low. Oh, this is Harry, Duke of Sussex. I know how you feel. You know, when one of your polo ponies is, is got the flu and is down and you why am I giving an Australian accent? I don't know. Is down for... <laughs> you know, his, the real job is just to get them in the news, right? In fact, they did. It worked. Better up. See, I mentioned it. It's kind of like batter up, only it's better. <laughs> it worked. Harry just earned his keep. Chief impact officer. It sounds like, uh, you know, you wouldn't be, want to be, for instance, if you were, uh, if you were uh, running uh, NASA, you wouldn't want to be the chief impact officer. That would be bad, right? If you're working in an airline, I'm, uh, I'm the chief impact officer. What does that do? Well, <laughs> you wouldn't want to be that, no. But I guess at a, at a coaching and mental health firm, being chief impact officer is a good job. Verizon has decided what to do with Yahoo. <laughs> no one could figure out what to do with Yahoo. No one. Verizon bought them. For a while, they renamed it Oath, which really confused everybody. Now they got a better brand. Yahoo Plus. <laughs> it's, it's Yahoo and so much more. Yahoo Plus. Oh, you have to pay for it. Oh, that's why there's plus it costs you, I guess, is the plus. TechCrunch Auto Blog and Gadget will still be TechCrunch Auto Blogging and Gadget. But other stuff, Yahoo Fantasy Plus, 
Don't ask. Yahoo Finance Plus, Yahoo Mail Plus, Yahoo Plus Protect. All will become part of the Yahoo Plus. Or you can be a tastemaker. If you're a tastemaker, you get free access to Yahoo subscription brand premium features like investor reports. How do you become a tastemaker? I don't know. Verizon bought Yahoo for $4.5 billion three years ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they bought AOL two years ago, or two years before that, five years ago, for $4.5 billion. Um, okay. Uh, I want to be a tastemaker or chief impact officer. That'd be good. Either way. Either one. I'll take either one. Tesla can now be bought with Bitcoin. If you want to buy a Tesla and you happen to have, you know, 50, you know, one Bitcoin would buy you a, a Tesla. One Bitcoin. And they're worth so much. Somebody said, well, you just might as well put gas engines in the things and be over it. See, the problem with Bitcoin is it uses so much power. It uses so much power that um, it's kind of uh, kind of silly to, to use Bitcoin to buy this electric vehicle. I don't, you know, it's kind of confusing. I'm confused. I'm just I'm just a touch confused. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. We can talk high tech with you. I'd love to. If you've got anything on your mind. She weaves her magic. She must have known that you're wearing a black top today. Except it's blue, but <laughs> is it really? It's yeah, a dark, it's very dark, so dark, so that dark. It looks black. She's a you know deep blue woman doesn't have the same. Sometimes I wonder if Laura has a secret camera in here because she doesn't see me before you. She knows. You know, she just she knows. knows. No, she's smart. She knows. That's Kim Schaffer. She is the person who will take your call if you call eighty eight eighty eight. Ask Leah groom you Do for I your know? appearance on the program. Did you have a good week? I did. Good. Yeah. Did a nice long walk yesterday around yeah. a lake. <laughs> yeah, these days, that's kind <laughs> that's of it, right? That's all you can do? Yeah, had a long walk. Seems like every friend of mine on the planet is moving away, so I'm doing a lot of uh, really? outdoor goodbye parties. Oh. So <laughs> that The walk was a goodbye. I'm going to Muir Beach after this oh, for another nice. goodbye. And really? I just got a notification that another friend's leaving, so I'm like, I'm going to be a lone soldier in this Wow. Place I well, we had friends. Uh, we had a whole family. They said, we're moving back. They were British. We're moving back to England. They uh -huh. lived here for a while. Had a nice party for them. Said goodbye. About three weeks later, they came back. <laughs> that I didn't keep, last I long. keep seeing them at the grocery store saying, hey, I thought you were going to leave. I know. It didn't they last haven't long. La they haven't left yet. No. This was years ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little weird. Going all the way to England is a little bit different than moving. I think they had I, lived here long enough that they didn't feel at home in England anymore. Well, that could be. That happens. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't know how you pick up and move your life and then are able to come back three weeks later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who should I, um, who should I uh, talk to? Let's go to San Diego. I think uh, Adam's dad's uh, Google Assistant might be drunk. I really love San Diego. <laughs> Can't say the same for Google Assistant. <laughs> and I, of course, I love she you. She sounds Thank you. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> go home. Go, 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 go home, Google. You're drunk. drunk. <sighs> Thank you, Kim. Hello, Adam. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. I haven't talked to you since we were both waiting for our first editions. I think we both got them now, huh? Oh, you got your car? And you, uh, yes. How do you like it? We're talking about our Mach-E, our Mustang Mach-E. Yeah, I got a little uh, the little horse, the little pony that you have behind you. I got one of those, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They sent us a little plastic pony. <laughs> That's a fair. You spend 50000 on a car. I think it's fair we get a little plastic pony to go with it. Yeah, a little little 3D printed. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. I was I was happy that they didn't say anything about doing that. So I thought, well, that's, that's a freebie. So, uh, so you're happy with it? You like it or no? Love it. Good. Love it, love it, love it. I don't have any issues with it at all. I haven't had a single problem. 
My only issue is the phone as key because you're supposed to be able to use your smartphone again. And I got in the car this morning ready to go to work. That's why I was a little, a little late getting here. Uh, and the phone, it didn't recognize it. So I had to go get my fob. So that's, I have had that happen uh, several times now and I have to rest, rest, you know, that's a dumb, that's silly. You should be able to, if you're going to make, because they only give you one fob. If you're going to make people use their phone as their car key, you shouldn't have it so it doesn't work because that can kind of strand you. You do have a password to drive the car with, which is cuckoo. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, right. what can I, what can I do for you today? All right, so I'm on the, on the tech support for my family, and uh, my dad has a S21 Ultra that he bought because he wanted a big screen. Samsung so Galaxy S21, they're nice, yeah. Yeah, uh, everything's great, works perfectly, except except whenever whenever he asks Google anything, I even made a little YouTube video, and I have I can I can play you the recording. I made like a 20 second recording. Um, whenever he asks the Google Assistant anything. Yeah. She talks like No, really? Really? Yeah, and you've gone into the, <laughs> the general there's a general management settings where you can do like text to speech and you can change the speech rate and the pitch of the of how it reads to you, but that hasn't helped. We've tried changing the name of the Google Assistant, um, trying to change the voice. Uh, nothing seems to work, and I can't. I'm stumped. I have searched the internet. I cannot figure this out. Do you want? Do you want to hear it? I can play it for you. Yeah, let's hear the drunk yeah. Google assistant. All right. You say say uh, your say your H G. What's the weather in San Diego? It's six three two two. <laughs> I know what's wrong with it. Uh, uh, it's it's like the uh, the sloth. In that movie, the DMV sloths. Yes, yes, Zootopia, Zootopia. Zootopia, they talked. So that's an accessibility, I think it's an accessibility feature. So if you go into your settings okay, and you go to accessibility, yeah, there is a, a text-to-speech output setting that you can, there's a slider. And just check to see if it slid to the left, like it slowed down. It's an accessibility thing. And, uh, I mean, that's I've seen that happen. <laughs> uh, I, I can't think any other reason why I would do that. That's very strange. Yeah. I can't either. We have not been able to, to solve the mystery. So, yeah, if you or anybody in the chat, well, I'll, we'll, we'll give that. Look in the accessibility, yeah, because that, that will do it. That will slow it down. Uh, so that, you know, sometimes people, you know, they have uh, cognitive issues or whatever. They can't, if she speaks too quickly, it's like, I can't, uh, I can't absorb it. So they make slow her down like you're at the DMV in Zootopia. I, the only, I love doing that uh, sloth thing, but it takes so long. People get tired of it very quickly. So <laughs> yeah, that was by far the funniest scene. In this. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. You just like it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, enjoy your new, uh, your new uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's an all electric vehicle. I'm love mine. I really do. It's, uh, it's a, I've had Tesla's uh, before. This is a, a Tesla and a model X. This is to me, this is a nice refined ride. I really like it. Nice to talk to you, Adam. Let me know if it doesn't work. We'll find another All right, fix. Thanks. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, actually, stay on the line and try it. I'm just curious if you can, if it'll work. All right. Just let's see. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I'm in accessibility. There's talk back, and then there's, oh, I see there's... Uh, text to speech. Look in. I think it's called text. You know what? Let me look on my uh, Android device. I can't remember the exact... I saw you the chat said playback speed, but I don't, I don't see it. It's a, uh, so you're in accessibility. Let's see, gear. Uh, do, 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 accessibility. Do, 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 not oh, you know what it's under? It's ge under general management, not accessibility. I just oh, found it. okay. And general is it? Text to speech. This is this is the problem. With Samsung's, they decided, eh, let's move stuff around a little. <laughs> I know it drives me nuts every time I get a new yeah. uh, Galaxy let's just, phone. Let's just because it's under in the in the Pixel, which is the you know the pure Android. It's under the accessibility text to speech output, and there's a slider, and you can speed it up or slow it down. There's also pitch, so I can. Yep, I, I see it in the uh, general management of of my S21. 
Oh, I have to turn it up probably. Let's see. I sped it up. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. That's too fast. <laughs> That's too fast. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. And, and I've, I've noticed at the top. Do you see where it says This is an example of speech engine? synthesis in English. Say again? Do you see at the top where it says preferred engine? I don't yeah. know what the difference is between those two. I, I'm you want Google's, that. obviously. Well, I mean... Uh, uh, but uh, you can also, with Google, you can install different voices and so forth. All right, we're going to give that a shot. See if that fixes it. I mean, I can I can literally make it at that... This is an example of speech synthesis in English. I turned her pitch up. Let me turn her pitch down and speech down. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. Doesn't sound quite like yours does, but this maybe... This is an yeah. example of speech synthesis in English. It might... It might um, it might, I don't know. There's a reset button. Uh, Samsung, you know, they do everything different. So they might right, well, they we'll, might do something else. I don't know. I'll, I'll give it a shot on my dad's phone when I see yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, it's nice to talk to you, Adam. So what, so are you happy you bought it? I, I don't, I came from a Bolt and I loved the Bolt. The Bolt was like a great yeah, little, you know. We have a Bolt. My wife has car. a, my wife and son's, it's actually my son's Bolt when he, Eventually gets he finally got his learner's permit. He's eighteen <laughs> when he finally gets his driver's license. But uh, the yeah, the bolt blew me away for like twenty grand. It blew me away. Yep, yeah, uh, it was a nice car. But this is a much much nicer. This is a little more elegant. Yeah, a little more luxurious. I I'm yeah. super happy with it. And yeah. I you know it's funny. I keep it in unbridled mode. I tried whisper and engage, but you know I like the single pedal driving, and it's got much more aggressive. Uh, slow down and unbridled so you can you can really use it as a break so i just leave it unbridled i don't know if that is killing the battery or making it better i don't know anyway gotta run no that's fine all right thanks Leo. thanks adam hey it's time to babble i don't mean babble you know when i when i do fake french it's not good when i do real french people understand me it's an amazing thing that's because i learned with Babel. Babel is the best way to learn uh, a foreign language. I'm a huge Babel fan. I, I studied French. I had learned it in high school, but you know, you forget it after a while. With Babel, I was able to get all my French back. I'd learned, you know, because we were going to France and I wanted to be able to speak, and it's great. It's wonderful. In case uh, you don't speak Francais, that means French, you can learn it from Babel or Espanol. You can learn it from Babbel. That's what I'm studying right now. I just, I just love Babbel. Here, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll continue my lesson in uh, in Babbel. Mucho gusto. Let's start it right here. Here we go. Let's see. The ending O usually indicates a masculine. Okay. Let's try this here. I'll make sure my sound is up so you can hear it. Let's see. Bienvenido, Pablo. Bienvenida, Ana. Bienvenido, Pablo. Bienvenida, Ana. Encantada. Encantada. She says encantada because she's a woman, even though she's speaking to Pablo. A man would say encantado. See, I'm learning. Babel's 15-minute lessons are great. You know, you start the day with it, or I, I like to do it at night because I, I, I do it at night. Then I do the review when I wake up. Really solidify that. They have a review as well. It's a perfect way to learn a new language anytime you've got a few minutes. Unlike those language classes I took in high school or you might have taken in school, Babbel designs their courses with practical, real-world conversations in mind. You don't have to learn la plume de ma tante. I never, ever, ever talked about my aunt's pen. <laughs> but I learned that sentence in French in high school, right? La plume de ma tante. In, in Babbel, I learned things like how to order food, how to buy something in a store, how to just meet people, say hello, get to know them, things you'll use in everyday life. Beginners start with typical greetings like, hello, how are you? Bonjour, comment ça va? And build up practical dialogues such as, how can I book a single room? Very useful if you're going to a hotel. One of the things I love about Babbel is they use humans, language experts, to design their lessons. That is not true of other systems. A lot of learning apps use AI. You know, they're generated. Babbel has over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been proven to be effective. You can choose from 14 languages. Uh, Spanish is the one I'm learning. French, Italian. Actually, that's my next. German. Our son is studying German. It's amazing. 
It's so nice to speak even just a little bit in the language of a country you're visiting or to the people who speak that language. They just appreciate it. They love it. And it, you get a smile every single time. Well, you get a smile if you've studied with Babbel and you don't sound like you're... Woo. Babbel's speech recognition technology is great for improving your pronunciation and your accent. So you're not... <laughs> Hello! You're not talking funny. Maybe you have a little accent, but you're, you're intelligible and they can tell you've put the effort in. Babbel makes it easy. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. I'm a big fan, a big supporter. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, pick your language, you'll get an additional three months free. That's six months for the price of three. Go to Babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L. If you would, use the promo code Tech Guy so they, they know you heard it on the Tech Guy podcast. That really helps us. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code Tech Guy. Three extra months when you buy three. Babbel. I love Babbel. Language for life. Babbel. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Time to talk home theater with our friend Scott Wilkinson, home theater geek and contributor at TechHive.com. Hi, Scott. Hey, Leo. How you doing? I'm doing great. Scott, it's funny. On the same day, got two very, very big packages on our front yeah. porch. Yeah. One was a new gaming monitor for me, an OLED, 55-inch OLED, 120 hertz mm. uh, gaming mm. monitor from Alienware. Very, very yeah, expensive. Yeah. And one was a very inexpensive TCL TV <laughs> for, for our my son's uh, PlayStation 5. He wanted 4K. He didn't have a 4K. He had all, you know, he had a very nice Viera. That was, you know, the oldest TV in the house he got. Right. Uh, plasma. So yep. now we got to figure out what to do with this beautiful old plasma. I think mm. we're going to give it to his dad, actually. He's his stepson. Yes. So I think his dad That's will appreciate good. it. But uh, the TCL's nice, except he's a little mad at me because I got a 120 hertz OLED. <laughs> and you got, he got and a got 60 hertz <laughs> LCD. <laughs> but I tried to explain to him, oh, Oh, Michael, you know, don't worry because uh, the games aren't 4K at 120 hertz. They're either 1080p at 120 hertz or 4K at 60. It's just too much. And maybe well, some... it depends on the console too. I mean, if you have yeah, the no, Xbox. the place yeah, some it's unusual to do both because yeah. you think it about it, it's twice as many the pixels. Consoles. This is the latest PlayStation Five. It might be a game okay. specific thing. It might be. It yeah. might be. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you were at a very fun conference. Tell us about that. I was. I was at the Hollywood Professional Association Annual Tech Retreat, which happened huh, over the last two weeks. Now, last year, the 2020 Tech Retreat, which normally is held in Palm Springs area, uh, last year's was like the last event, conference-type thing I went to before the pandemic shutdown. And it was in February, and then in March, boom, we were all shut down. There were no more conferences. And so this year, it was all online, of course. And it was uh, consisted over eight days of online stuff that you could go to and watch live and interact with the panelists or the presenters and ask questions and so on. There were over 800 attendees at this thing. Uh, dozens of companies making presentations, uh, demonstrations, and participating. Uh, there were over 400 sessions, which I thought was way, you know, I mean, you, you can't possibly get to all of it, uh, most of which are, are now available to registered attendees of the conference as uh, video on demand. So this is one of the great things about virtual conferences, of course. And what I found great is you can go back and watch a, a presentation and if you didn't catch something you could stop go back uh, a few minutes you can't do that in a live situation it's a very technical conference it's very inside baseball right so it's not it's not for everybody but it's so useful for professionals people like directors cinematographers editors colorists sound engineers all the people that are responsible for making the content that we all watch and enjoy, uh, they get 
a look at the very latest technology uh, that that's available to them to do these things. And during the pandemic, uh, obviously this this presented a, a special challenge. Now, last year, the the main the highlight or the centerpiece, I should say, of the conference is something called the Super Session, during which uh, they actually create content before your very eyes. And last year, they, they were experimenting with this new thing, post-production in the cloud, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this year, obviously, that got kicked up a notch. In fact, an order of magnitude, I would say. Did they show Frame.io, my friend Emery Wells? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Frame.io was deeply involved. Yeah, so that's amazing because you basically shoot the footage and it goes up to the cloud. Yes. Immediately, yes. as you're shooting it, it which is incredible. Immediately, as you're shooting. Yeah. In fact, what goes up to the cloud is, A, 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 a lower resolution, what's called a proxy, that can go up pretty fast, and people can start looking at it and working on it, and then the actual raw camera negative, or camera original camera file, it's called, uh, which is 4K or 6K no, or 8K huge. or 12K, yeah. very, very large files. That goes up too, but it takes a lot longer, right. of course. But that's now, one of the things that you can do with editing is you don't have to have the super high quality correct. to do the editing. You can do the editing and create what's called an uh, EDL, an edit, edit decision, decision list. list, and then yep. that can be applied to the high quality footage. Exactly, so it's a good way to so get a quick can start edit. Working on it right away. Yeah, it's really interesting. Now, last year they did one short movie in this way. This year they were working on seven short movies being shot all around the world. Wow. There was one in Hollywood, Mexico City, London, Dubai, <laughs> Ulaanbaatar, uh, Mongolia, and so, Brisbane, Australia. So this way your um, editors don't have to be in Ulaanbaatar. They can be at home. That's right. Getting the footage, doing the preliminary edit. That's pretty cool. That's right. That's, That's right. Cool. It's, it was super cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was told that the, the, the main drawback of this is that the producer of the Super Session, uh, a guy named uh, Joaquin Zell, uh, he couldn't sleep because there were people doing it's all work around the world. All yeah. around the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time yeah, zones are a, are a bad yes, thing. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Had to say the right B word there. <clears throat> yes, exactly. That's cool. And they were. Yeah. They is, were it, is there more than Frame.io uh, doing this? Because they're the ones I know about, but uh, other companies are doing this too. There are other companies, I think, that now, are doing it now too, that right? Frame.io has done it. Emery, Emery is really a cool guy. I invented all this, and I think he's doing quite well with it. So that's yeah, really yeah. Cool. They were deeply involved yeah. in this whole thing. Yeah. Nice, absolutely, absolutely. So that was really a lot of fun. Um, they, they even uh, put installed portable five G hotspots in these various locations. Nice, so that stuff could get could get uploaded quickly. Yeah, and they used three different clouds: AWS. Uh, Azure and Google, and they were transferring stuff from one cloud to another, which was another right. interesting thing. Right. Uh, <clears throat> That's one so, of the things, uh, you know, we've made a kind of a <laughs> mocked 5G for some time and for good reason. But yeah. one of the one of the really incredible things, if I mean, maybe it'll be Elon Musk's Starlink instead, but if you can get high speed bandwidth anywhere in the world, uh, suddenly a lot of interesting things open up. That's right. Including That's right. this. Including this. Yeah. Including remote yeah. production and, yeah. and uh, collaboration. Do they show the world. TVs there or tech, uh, any hardware no. there? No. No, no, not really. It's it's technologies. It's, it's technologies. Yeah. yeah. There was a great presentation I th I found called High Resolution and Beyond, and they were talking about 8K, 12K. Now we don't have 8K or well, we have a few 8K TVs. We don't have 12K or anything. But the uh, one of the points made at this conference at, the, at that session that I thought was so cool was that shooting at super high resolution lets you uh, capture what's called the Z depth. So you can capture information on each pixel about how where it is in the Z direction, in the depth fee of field, allowing you to edit out things that are behind other things. Whoa. It eliminates the need for a green screen. Wow. It's super cool. Now it takes, it if you have a 12K image, it takes uh, a lot of that those pixels to encode the depth uh, so it reduces the 2D image resolution that you have, but it gives you these incredible capabilities that uh, I the 
presenter said, and I agree with him, is going to be the next big thing in cinematography. Yeah, that's what uh, James Cameron's been pushing, right? It's high frame rate, high resolution. (laughs) Right. Uh, right. Well, uh, he's not. He's not high. pushing this though. The light field, three D. Oh, this is that three D thing. Yeah, yeah, light field. It's yeah, light yeah. field is yeah. what it's called. Remember the Lytro camera? Yeah, we. Yeah, we saw light field stuff at CES way back Ex- in the day. <laughs> exactly. Well, now it's being used not for three D, but for better editing. Scott Wilkinson, home theater geek, tech hive contributor, and of course regular on this show. Thanks, Scott. You bet. All righty. Hey, thanks, Leo. Uh, the b- bunch of the HPA guys were guys and gals were uh, watching the stream, so glad to well, glad to give them the a plug, out. huh? It was great. It was a great a great session. Nice, Good. a great conference. You are on, my friend. Cool. Let me go to the chat room here. Hi, everybody. Oh, I think I have you reversed. <laughs> let's, let's do it this way instead. Yes. Happy Pesach, Kay Woods and, and oh, everyone. That's right. It's Passover, yeah. Passover tonight. Yep. First one. I'm having First a brisket. Night. That's not exactly Seder, but <laughs> <laughs> we are having all the family over for dinner, so it'll be fun. Well, that's good. Yeah. We're, we're doing a virtual Seder tomorrow. Oh, fun. Yeah, you did that uh, last year, I remember. Yeah, we did. That was the first one. We're, yeah. we're doing it again. Good. Um, yeah, it's over. It's over. I'm pretty sure it's over Zoom. Yeah. Uh, Are you on they, Zoom they now? Enough. I am. Yeah, it looks good. I think we found a good technology. We found for a you. solution. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, indeed. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Mike, man. I'm sorry. I missed s- mentioning the content lake. They, they, it, at the, uh, at the super session, they were talking about the content lake. All of this content in the cloud in a giant lake, essentially. And once it's there and you pass through the, the security of getting into the lake, everyone's swimming in the same lake. The same content lake. Uh, sorry, I didn't, I forgot to mention that. Uh, <clears throat> Phoenix Warp One, uh, any movie I'm looking forward to seeing safely in theaters. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to going back to the theater, but I'm not going to do it for a while. I mean, I, <clears throat> pardon me. Frog in the throat there. Um, I am fully vaccinated now. I've had my second Pfizer Woo-hoo! shot over two weeks ago. So I presumably oh, wow. am fully protected. I'm so jealous. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, we have a great hospital here in Burbank where uh, they they reached out to the community. Oh, that's really said, good. That's you know, nice. we're giving the co- we're giving the vaccine to the community t- to Providence patients. And so I've lived here most of my here, life, and I've been a patient here there several in California, times. California, starting Monday, anybody over fifty can get it, and then yep. the f- I think two weeks later, anybody over sixteen. So we're we're gonna get the whole the whole we're family, get the whole state. Yeah. yeah. And you, you can get the whole family. Yeah, uh, that'll vaccinated. be nice. I'm looking forward to that. And I think I heard that Johnson & Johnson is, is there's going to be a lot of that. And yeah. that's yeah. the single shot. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to get our shot, you know, sooner than later. So we went and got it. But am I going to go back to the theater anytime soon? Actually, probably not. Not for a while. I just, I just, I mean, even though I'm protected, uh, it's just being inside in a closed room. I have no idea how the ventilation system is. And having the vaccine doesn't mean you can't get it. It means you can't get a severe case of it. But it doesn't mean you can't get it, period. So I'm going to remain cautious. That's just me, but I'm going to remain conscious, uh, cautious about it. Um. Mike B says that's because Merck is making the J and J vaccine. Uh, I I don't know why that would mean we're getting bunches of it, but I guess they have a better manufacturing. Two, two different pe- two different companies are making it. Ah, uh, right. Okay. All right. And and I, I heard that Merck has a much larger manufacturing capability, right, or capacity. So we're going to get a bunch. Can you hang out for the top of the hour? You betcha. <laughs> Leo Laporte. 
The Tech Guy, 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number. Ed on the line from Tulsa, Oklahoma, our next caller. Hi, Ed. Leo, how's everything going? It's going good. How are you? All right, all right. Thanks so much for taking my call. It's really great to speak with you. I appreciate your calling. Yeah, I think I have something that Scott may be able to weigh in on. Well, he's still here, so go ahead. I, in the past five years, I've bought three audio video receivers, two Onkyo and one Yamaha. And for different reasons each, every one of them has quit working or gone kaflu in one way or another <laughs> within, two year, within two years. Hmm. Oh, now, man. Am I, am I just lucky or what? Do you have your uh, audio video gear on a surge suppressor by any chance? And I don't mean actually better than a surge suppressor. You want to... A, you know, a significant one that will do power conditioning because these devices are somewhat sensitive to fluctuations in power. Right. But it, it's on an AP, APS. AP, APS is even better. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, or UPS from APC. UPS. Yeah. <laughs> Un yeah, yeah, yeah. Uninterruptible power supply. Um, yeah, and of course, you want, ideally, you want a, U, a UPS that. Uh, is always running off the battery, so you don't have a glitch when the power goes out. Is, is your power uh, inconsistent, or do you have an older home? No, not really. Okay. No, it's it's right. pretty, pretty good. Huh. I have one. As an airplane goes by, we'll talk again. <laughs> you know, I think that both both Yankio and uh, Yamaha are, are very well-respected brands. Yeah, uh, And it's not normal for any solid-state device to die after one or two years, let alone two of right. them. It, it, only audio video receivers every other electronic thing i have i have no problem with but these three three of them in five years i'm starting to think just do three I three in five years well that's not right. good yeah that's weird that is super weird there's uh, different reasons different things happened well i was gonna i was that was i was gonna ask did, does different do different things happen to each one of them or is it the same problem each time yeah different each time Wow. What, the other thing I'd look at is make sure you're not putting them in a sealed cabinet where the heat gets high. Good you know? point. Excellent point. But they're not. They're not. No, they're out, out on exposed just shelves. Okay. Right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, overheating certainly will shorten the life of these things. But nowadays, yeah. because they don't have tubes in them anymore, uh, solid state's pretty reliable. You may just have had bad luck. If, if your power's okay and you're not overheating them, Scott, can you think of any other cause i i can't i can't uh i was going to ask if he lived in you you already asked it if his power was funky or lived in an area with a lot of lightning strikes or something like that or power went out or brownouts or something but if not then yeah i think it's it's luck tis a puzzlement <laughs> bad luck yeah. yeah i i you know i i'm trying to think what else could you be doing but i i just i don't think there's anything else Let's see. Um, I mean, he's got it plugged into a UPS. You don't have a cat that sleeps on it. <laughs> uh, that, you know, hair or, or uh, the yeah, cat could actually true. be a blanket. <laughs> overheat it. Could overheat it. Right? I'm or still thinking about in. the power. Um, a UPS is certainly a start, but make sure you have a UPS that gives you a clean signal into the device. Power conditioning. A, a power well. conditioning. And it's ideal to have one that powers it off the battery. And not not, a, not an instantaneous failover, so you don't have that millisecond pause right. when the power goes out. But if your power doesn't go out a lot, I, that's probably not it either. Oh, um, I took that in the specs or advertising or anything. Yeah, yeah. Look for line conditioner. Um, it, uh, they're more expensive. <laughs> obviously, they're going to be more expensive. Uh, Trip Light makes one um, that has LC in the number product number for line conditioner. That would give you some idea. You could get one from Trip Light that's just a line conditioner and continue to use the battery in your power. Uh, you know, if you don't have bad power uh, that goes out often, you don't really need a UPS. Although but a you line know, in house in house power can be you know bad wiring and so forth. You could have problems mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't necessarily be related to power outages. Well, so that's true. You want to make sure you you're properly grounded. You always plug it into grounded. the same outlet. Uh, yeah, you always yeah. plug. And the and, and, and the TV and the, and the Blu-ray players and they're and the, they're all plugged in the same thing. They're all okay, and they're equally sensitive. Yeah. You know, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would I would still have an electrician come out and just uh, check the power. It's not a bad idea anyway, periodically no. to do that. I can't think of any no. other cause for these things failing unless, you know, three is a lot. But it could yeah, be it you is. just had a string of really bad luck. I've never had one fail. Uh, no, I usually get I. dent on, but I've had a number of Onkyo receivers. Just yeah. bought a new dent on for my lucky kid. <laughs> 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 He's getting my old speaker set up. Uh, my old five yep. one speaker setup. Um, so he needed an amp, uh, but boy, I can't. I can't think of any other reason. I think we you we, you stumped us. Can't yep, don't know so. don't know Ed. Thank you for sticking around though, Scott. I appreciate. Oh it. sure, <laughs> that's great. Let's go to Springfield, Illinois. Don is on the line. Hi, Don. Hey, Leo. What's up? So. Um, you were talking last week about Windows updates, and you described the two updates, the uh, feature updates and the uh, Critical updates, updates yeah. Yeah, critical updates. Um, this, this, just this morning, I noticed that there's a third category that they have on here. It's called an optional quality update, and I'm wondering if I should download that or not. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Microsoft. Yeah, there's, there's feature updates are the twice a year. So uh, we're waiting for 21H1 will be the next one. And by the way, because these feature updates have been such a nightmare since 2004, spring of last year, they've actually, the last two, uh, this the one that's coming and the one from last fall, have been not so much feature updates as fixes for the previous feature update. So if you've had problems with 2004, so many people have. 21H1 will probably be a good one to get. That should be out any day now. Then they're also doing cumulative updates. Those are often part of the Patch Tuesday. And critical updates. I do those. I would recommend you do those. Uh, those come out every month on the second Tuesday of the month. And yeah, we get these optional updates. What they are generally is for hardware, drivers, other things that you don't necessarily have to apply. There are no... There's no imminent security threat to not applying them. But I generally, uh, what I my plan with optional updates is to wait. Give it a week or two to wait and see if anybody says something like, my printer won't work anymore, things like that. That was the big one, by the way. Two weeks ago, somebody called me and said, my Kia Sarah, every time I print to it, I get a blue screen of death in Windows. Yeah, so did we. It turns out we have a Kia Sarah laser, Kia Sarah Rico, and a couple of other models. Microsoft said, oh, whoops, and fixed it a week later. But that's a that's the kind of thing, since it is optional, it's not a security, it's not a security fix. It's, it's usually a hardware uh, driver update, that kind of thing. I would wait. I would give it a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Keep your ear to the ground. People screaming, oh, my God, this thing is terrible. If you don't hear any, you know, complaints, then it's probably a good idea to do it. I usually do those because I figure, uh, you know, you want the latest drivers in general for, for your stuff. I wish Microsoft didn't have all these different categories for updates. It's, it, it's very confusing, to be honest. I don't blame you for being confused. I uh, optional. You you'll see. It says exactly what it's for. Are most of yes. Yeah, see, I just got some optional ones. Let's see. Uh, yeah, they're driver updates in my case for Intel and Lenovo on my Lenovo. So I'm going to do those. Check and see if they've been out for a while. Certainly, it's worth doing. Maybe a few weeks, a month. Okay. I, I got a follow-up question. Okay, hang on, because the magic music's telling me it's time for news at the top of the hour. We'll be back with more in just a bit. You hang on the line. We can talk off the air. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Sure, what's your other question? So, um, I, you know, so, so, so I'm getting a little bit tired of Windows. Um, <laughs> yeah, <and> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can you tell in my voice, the tone of voice, that it's like exasperation? Like, oh, God, again? <sighs> so, you know, I, I went on, so I'm interested in the iPad Pro. And, you know, I saw this attractive young woman on YouTube talking about how she uses the iPad Pro for uh, everything that she does. And I'm wondering if you kind of agree with that or... It really depends uh, what you do. A lot of times, uh, and I've tried to do this, and I know many people have had, uh, it's a little bit of a stretch. So it's a little inconvenient for some of the things you want to do. If you're going to do it, iPad Pro is a, is a great thing. In fact, the new iPad Pro, which should come out this in April, 
will be as fast as the M1 Macintoshes that they released. Oh, wow. So it's that chip, the A14X, we believe. Uh, but you're going to want to also get a keyboard. So at that point, you're spending as much money as you would if you got a laptop. Oh, wow, yeah. So like $1,400 or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so yeah. is it a laptop? No, it's an iPad. But for a lot of people, an iPad's all they need. If it's surfing, you know... I personally prefer a laptop, uh, but that's my preference. Certainly a lot of people are happy, but I notice the people who say, oh, no, I use an iPad for everything, it's a little bit of a, like, they have to a little bit of shoehorn in there, you know, a little bit of a square peg in a round hole sometimes. So, and I don't want that. I want the, I mean, it's already inconvenient enough. I don't want to add any inconvenience to computing. So it's safer. It's a lot more secure. I would look at a Chromebook, which is more like a real laptop, Think about that, you know. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm using Linux uh, on most of my PCs. I just took the same Windows PC and I just put Linux on it, and I'm much happier. Frankly, I'm happier with Linux than I am with Mac OS or Windows because it's. But it's kind of more of a geeky operating system. But it's doesn't have any of the rest Apple's getting so many restrictions now on Mac OS that it's kind of like iOS. It's kind of like it's limited. So iPad OS is more and more like a computer. What do you do ch chiefly? Well, I check email, do banking, surf the net. Uh, yeah. you know, be fine for that. Like that. Yeah. It's just that it's not cheaper than a computer. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's yeah, like an expensive problem. Apple computer. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got to run. Sounds good. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, Don. Take care. Sorry, Scott. All yours. No you still got six minutes. Six minutes. Woo. Woo So, okay, well, I'm just going to go over here to Zoom, and uh, look, I got six minutes. Yay. So nice to see you all. Uh, Genthman was uh, asking me about uh, DAX, digital to analog converters, a budget one for an audio file, and I told him that the uh, the, the company called iFi, I-F-I, they're out of the UK, uh, makes some really spectacular ones. Uh, I use the iFi hip deck for my iPhone, which is 150 bucks, something like that. Uh, they also make one called the Zen, Zen Can, I believe, which is a DAC and amp. So is the iFi, uh, the hip DAC is a, a DAC digital analog converter, and an amplifier. <clears throat> and the Zen can, I believe, is on the order of 150 bucks as well. Now, iFi also makes really expensive stuff. But the fact that they managed to get as much performance out of this, these little guys for 150 bucks, quite astonishing to me, really, really. Um, highly recommend it. Um... So, yeah. Oh, let's see. Scooter X says, Astell and Kern's new USB-C DAC promises hi-fi audio for phones without headphone jacks. Oh, for, for yeah. Um, that is true. The iFi hip DAC also has, uh, well, it has a lightning connector. Uh, so if you have an iPhone, then... The hip deck's good. If you have a USB-C connector, then the Astell and Kern is probably uh, great, too. Astell and Kern makes also very, very good products. Uh, I don't know how expensive they are. Uh, Mike Heiss. Hey, Mike. Good to see you. Happy Passover to you. Anyone looking for a high-end DAC should buy now. If they've got something in mind, the fire in the AKM factory oh, is yeah, going to last create a year. huge part shortage. That's right. Yep. Already is. Yeah. Didn't I hear some some company? Uh, I oh, it's a uh, Neo, the electric car company in China, and another one here shutting down for a week because of semiconductor shortages. Yeah. This is these. This company makes da very nice DAX, uh, among other microcontrollers, and uh, they ah, were, they burned, AKM. Yeah, they burned down in November, and I there's been lots of talk about these problems yeah so it's you're big, right big I, office I, hours get a lot uh, more expensive <laughs> yeah yeah well just not available it turns out they made most of them 
<laughs> so, oops. Right. Yeah. Oops. Oops. If you look uh, at, right. uh, if you search AKM Fire, uh, you'll find. Uh, Wait, was that here in LA? Was no, that no, 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 no. It was. It's in China. China, yeah. In yeah, uh, sorry, okay. Japan. Three day Japan. fire. Um, pro audio manufacturers around the globe are now facing anticipated shortages of crucial DAC and ADC chips used in their products. It's Ooh. probably the most disruptive event in my 40 years of audio industry history, said wow. CEO of Millennium Media. Devastating is not too strong a word. Can 2020 <laughs> get any worse? <coughs> they, oh, uh, man. they make uh, solid state logic, Tascam, mini DSP, merging technologies, SPL, and RME, among others. Solid um, state logic. I mean, that's high end. Yeah. Every AKM part we use, ADCs, DACs, ASRCs, and receivers, is made exclusively in this plant, uh, said Millennia. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. And this was back in in uh, October, late October. So, mm, mm. wow. So maybe Mike uh, Mike Heiss is right. Uh, <laughs> buy it now. <laughs> well, yeah, if you can. I mean, if you can, if you I, know what you want. I wonder if the hip deck is uh, is. They've always had trouble getting those out the door anyway. Well, that's true. But that they that was more to the point of the the COVID right. Uh, disruptions in supply chain right that was true before you said it was this fire was in october october yeah yeah so it may get worse now that's possible yeah, yeah. if they use the akm chips which as if what you're saying is true they very might very well might because there's so a general there's also just a general chip shortage that's just mm -hmm. nasty that's why you know it's so hard to get a lot of a lot of stuff i had to wait yeah. have to wait two months for my computer uh, mm. Michael waited four months for his PS5. Same thing with uh, Xboxes. They're very... Oh, wow. Big shortages, yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, Merce Angel says, is the hip deck hip? It is. It is super hip. <laughs> I love it. I just think it sounds great. Um, so uh, I keep reaching for my mouse and it's out of juice. I'm recharging it. <laughs> Well, it's all right. So are you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Scott. <laughs> My pleasure. We're all out of juice. Have a great Passover. We're all out of Enjoy juice. Enjoy your yes, Happy tomorrow. Passover to you. Yeah, yes, thanks. indeed. All right. Take care. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all the G Jaws and Gim cracks and gadgets that are populating our lives. Phone number is 8888-ASK-LEO. If you want to give us a call, 8888-ASK-LEO. Website, techguylabs.com. You can go there and uh, everything we talk about on the show is always there linked and so forth. Uh, during the break, we probably put this in the show notes as well. Scott and I were talking a little bit about the chip shortage. There's a worldwide chip shortage, as you might have noticed, if you're trying to get a... Microsoft Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 from Sony or a new computer, um, new cars. Big, big lag and delay. Part of it due to COVID-19. Part of it due to just other factors. There was a big fire in Japan uh, last fall of a semiconductor uh, manufacturer, AKM, that makes high-end chips for audio components, things like that. Also for some automobiles. Um that factory is out of commission and will be for, you know, till next month or the month after. They said a six months to rebuild. Those, so those chips, you know, there was stock, but now that stock dwindled to nothing. And, you know, uh, we're already seeing car manufacturers saying we're going to halt production for a while, partly due to that, partly due to other uh, limitations. Partly also, I hate to say it, but some of the, some of the issues, especially for high-end video cards and PCs, is that the value of cryptocurrencies is so high now. Uh, you know, Bitcoin is up to $55,000 a coin that it's economical to mine them. A lot of people buying high-end uh, video cards, GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD, high-end processors, and mining uh, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin because, you know, they can make a couple hundred bucks a month. So that suddenly there's this huge market for these cards and there's a big scalper's market. 
Yeah, the scalpers ruin everything. So every time there's a new... I think this happened, frankly, with the PlayStation and the Xbox as well. Every time there's a new, you know, bunch of machines, uh, the scalpers buy them up. They have all sorts of tricks, you know, bots and so forth, and they buy them up faster than any human can, and that's it. They're off the market. And if you want them, if you want a NVIDIA, you know, GTX 3090 to mine your Bitcoin, you're going to pay a lot more than list because the scalpers got them. It's kind of a kind of an unfortunate situation. Um, GameStop's uh, <laughs> saying they're selling GPUs, but they don't have any to sell. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we'll sell them if we can ever get them. We'll sell them. Actually, GameStop's where my son got his PlayStation Five. He was so excited. They got you know they get a pallet in, ten of them or twenty of them, and they uh, and they sell out immediately. Go to eBay, you'll see why they sell out. People can sell them for twice the face value on uh, on eBay. And and people are buying them. Don't buy them, folks. Don't encourage this. Don't encourage the scalping. It's not, it's not a good thing. 8888 Ask Leo. Greg's in Los Angeles, our next caller. Hi, Greg. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Thank you. It's good to speak with you today. So... Uh, my mom has been using PCs since uh, uh, the DOS, the, the, the DOS times, and now she's up to Windows 10. And that's great, except she never really internalized the way files and directories and, and, and directory structures work. And um, even though we, we use um, Windows, which kind of uh, uh, isolates us from everything um, in, you know, in, in, in dealing with all that, uh, she really needs to learn about, um, about that, to have that basic directory file literacy. She finally uh, uh, agrees that, yes, she needs to do something about it. And um, um, she kind of doesn't want to teach herself. Um, uh, she doesn't, she, she doesn't want to get a book. Yeah, well, she will if she has to. Um, I'm looking at Udemy or Udemy or however you Udemy, say. yeah, U-D-E-M-Y. Right, and they have a few uh, um, uh, MS-DOS classes. I, I was fortunate enough, and it's long gone now, to actually take uh, an MS-DOS class at a community You class. want your mom to take an MS-DOS class. Wow. Uh, uh, it, <laughs> that's what it takes. It's not so much to learn MS-DOS. Yeah. But to get that literacy. I, you know, I, and uh, I'm old enough that that's how I first computed. I didn't have a graphic operating system. Windows right. wasn't available. Mac wasn't available when I started computing in the late 70s. So I used the command line. I got used to the yep. command line. And, and, of course, I still use the command line in Linux all the time and on Mac all the time. I'm very comfortable with it. And it is a good point. If you, you know, I... I guess because I've done that, I don't know what it's like not to understand that part of how it works. It's in, it's built into my brain, you know. It's yep. a it's a muscle memory. Right. So we're, we're, I guess yeah. it would be challenging if you didn't really know well, what's going on. And I'll be honest, Windows tries to hide that yep. with libraries and so forth. And I and I I have I've kind of maybe again because I come from an old school way of doing these things, but I'm not that fond of how Windows uh, does these. You know, the, the first thing you see when you open File Explorer in Windows is quick access, which looks like folders. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's uh, these kind of funky things, these libraries. Uh, and it's very confusing to me as somebody who understands the operating system. And and, and that's the issue because, um, uh, but, but, but it's, it's more than that because uh, where I'm coming from is, uh, like your first caller today, I'm tech support, which is fine. So I, she calls I, you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, and, and in fairness to her, she can do a lot of this stuff herself on her own. Great, but what, what I'm saying, what, what I'm, I believe, is that if she had that, and it's not even a DOS issue, just the no, I get what you're saying. So she understood the underlying yes. uh, c concept of folders or directories, which are the right. same thing, and and uh, where stuff is stored on Windows is certainly and the nesting and so on, blah blah blah. Yeah, it's certainly helpful to me to know that. Well, it's more than helpful to everyone. Who yeah, knows. yeah. Uh, it's a shame she has to know that. This, you know, the last caller was saying, should I get an iPad? On on a device like the iPad, uh, there they exist. There's a file system, but you don't ever get exposed to it. I think Apple does that because they realize 
uh, people don't understand it. Here's my problem with Udemy. Uh, some of the courses are very good, some are not. Yeah. Uh, because anyone can give a course on Udemy. Right. So... I, I think these are, I mean, I think it's a great way to learn. There are many, uh, these are called MOOCs, Massively Online uh, Courses. Yep. Um, and there are others. There's Coursera. We have a sponsor, Udacity, very well known. Uh, I use uh, often use EDX, which is a joint venture of MIT, Harvard. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if I guess if you're going to send it to Udemy, uh, I would preview the course yourself first. All right. Because there are very good courses there, and there are also not so good courses there. You might even go in on YouTube and see, because she doesn't need to know a whole lot. I bet you there's a series of uh, general computing classes on YouTube that would be as good as anything on Udemy, to be and, honest. And, yeah, and, and I have been ser uh, searching and researching those, and, and, and yes, uh, there, there's, there's... It's the same problem, which is there's good stuff and there's terrible stuff. Yeah. So you'd almost have to vet it before you let her do it. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. the double uh, the chat room's telling me AARP you know, has classes. Okay. So I would also look at uh, AARP to see if they have, because it would be aimed at uh, somebody uh, my age, her age, a little older. Yeah. They have. <laughs> 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 uh, well, it's learn.aarp.org. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, it, in a way that sounds a little ageist. Like, oh, well, you probably need a special class from uh, AARP. Oh, yeah. Huh. But she might feel more, maybe she'll feel more comfortable, maybe not. Um, I wish, uh, I, you know, quiet. my problem with Windows, and the same thing, I say this to everybody, Windows is designed for businesses that have an IT department. Or, in your mom's case, you. You're her IT department. And, and, and uh, yeah, well, yeah, and, and I don't, again, I don't mind doing that, but it, it's like um, she hits issues and... No, she should, why not? She's smart. There's no reason she should not know how to do this. I'm not sure MS-DOS, well, I guess where else are you going to learn the file system? I don't know. I mean, that's really, that's the lowest level. She doesn't need to know batch files. No, of course, of course. And, and, and again, well, yeah, but uh, the, the, the real, again... Um, uh, as long I would be happy if again if she just gets that basic, you know, a uh, uh, file directory structure literacy, net, right. blah 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 blah, and, and she she can rattle off the uh, uh, the, the textbook def a textbook definition of directories, and, and like like we're kind of discussing here, she has not internalized it the way we did. Yeah, as Jedi. That's what I I'm do see. I'm looking on your demi MS DOS basics from scratch. Yep, I'm looking right yeah. at yeah. Um, I, it's free, so I would. What I would do is I would just, you know, you don't have to watch the whole thing, but I would scan right. through it and just kind of get a sense of, you know, is this is this something? Right. And you know, mom better than anybody. Is this something yeah. mom's going to take to and understand, or is this going to be over her head? What you don't want to do is frustrate people, right? Yeah, I've, yeah. As as tech support, I've, I've yeah. Because if she looks at this yeah. and goes, "Oh, this is too hard for me," she may never go. You may never go back. You may have. You may lose her, <laughs> which has happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it, you and I, and anybody who started, you know, yeah. in the beginning, we never really had to experience this. We don't know what it's like to not understand how the file system works. So yeah, and 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 again, like like you were kind of saying, um, Windows uh, or modern these modern OS products, they try to help you. Yeah. Well, yes, but but they they infantilize exactly the, the users. That, yeah, I'm kind of with you. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. <laughs> let's uh, let's treat mom and tell as an intelligent human being and say, uh, you should just you know learn these basics. It'll take you an hour, but once you understand how this works. You know, where Windows puts your files, for instance. The problem is, you know, Windows, <laughs> there's this, there's all these weird uh, variables like percent user directory percent and things I like know. that, that I don't know if any human should ever have to learn that. I, I feel like Windows, unfortunately, uh, suffers because everybody who works on it, it, like us, started with file systems and DOS. And they haven't really abandoned it too much. And every solution they come up with is is challenging. Yeah, go ahead. Khan Academy also has uh, classes. So, uh, spell that. What did you say? K-A-H-N. Oh, Khan 
Academy. Though. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know actually if Khan Academy has DOS classes. Udemy's fine. Okay. Uh, look at Udemy. Uh, you know what's neat is there's people there who've made courses who just really want to help, and a lot of those courses are free. But there's also courses that are just trying to get money out of you and are terrible. It's just a mixed bag because it's like YouTube. It's it's open to anybody. Uh, Leo, thank you so much for uh, for for all this. Uh, I will uh, set to this at once. And You're welcome, Greg. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Um, what do people really need to know? Do they need to know how to move around on a command line? Probably not. She doesn't really need to know how to use DOS because she's never going to use DOS. What she needs to know is kind of what's under the hood on Windows. This should just be a little class. Under the hood. <laughs> what? What's going on? Where are your files? You know, what... <laughs> If you know, you probably could spend half an hour with her. Just open the File Explorer and and spend half an hour. And and by the way, I would turn off things like quick access. The whole library thing that Windows does, which is, it's not a library. It's a save search, is what it really is. Is very to me very confusing. Turn that puppy right off. <laughs> Uh, I'm not, as you can tell, I'm not a fan. Uh, <laughs> the briskets are cooking. It's, it's funny because uh, when I wrapped it and repositioned the probe, it went from like 188 or something to 176. So I must have put it in a cooler part, or maybe it lost some temperatures. Going, for, we're trying to go to 203. Dinner's at five. I think I'm okay. The Tech Guy Podcast brought to you today by Udacity. Oh, we were just talking about online learning. Look, you could, of course, watch YouTube videos, but the quality, it varies. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. None of them give you what Udacity gives you. In fact, Udacity is unique because they partner with the biggest companies in tech, companies that are looking for employees, but 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 are not satisfied with the running of the mill employee, the employee who got a you know standard degree or that kind of thing. They want people with specific skills. So they've partnered with Udacity, which is an online learning system, to create these nano degrees. Udacity is the world's fastest, most efficient way to master the skills tech companies want with these nano degrees. Don't waste your valuable time or money trying to piece this together yourself. Udacity's got it all together. They've partnered with IBM, Microsoft, Google, Amazon to create programs that give you the skills you need. When you enroll in, the, in a specific course, you view the online courses. Yes, there's video because that's a great way to learn. It lectures from really good people in the field, right? That's, the, that's kind of the smart thing about this is... You've got somebody who's a real expert. All you have to do is get them in the studio once, give that, give those lectures. Now you've got them forever. But the, but the most important part of Udacity is not just the lectures. It's the additional course material, including the projects. Because, And this has been my experience, too. You can take the class, but that doesn't give you the hands-on you need to really master the skill. So every course has projects that will be reviewed by qualified professionals. You can get real human help, personalized code reviews, access to qualified mentors. And the thing about Udacity is it's 24-7. And precisely because people are doing this all over the world, Udacity is totally global. But also, you know, many people have a day job. They're going home, they're doing this in the evening. You do it on your own pace at your own time. So it's absolutely flexible. It's, a, it's a, their job-relevant skills. In fact, there's some great stuff on Udacity that's free. There are lots of free courses. They have classes on how to network, how to get noticed, and land the job you want. What are the most sought-after nano degrees with Udacity, both for consumers and business clients? Well, the top 10 include data analyst, a program for data science with Python. That's actually the one I want to take next. I did their Python course. Excellent. Uh, digital marketing. You'll, I've been at Udacity customer since 2012. It's a really great place to build skills through industry-leaning programs built and recognized by top companies worldwide. AI, cloud computing, data science, autonomous systems. Yes, you want to get, I mean, that's a hot area, right? Self-driving vehicles. You can get into that. 
programming, development, product management, their softer skills like digital marketing, tech-adjacent roles. Improve your earning potential. Get real employable skills through project-based active learning. That's the key. These are really well-designed courses. They offer not only free courses, but for the paid courses, flexible payment options. You can learn at your own pace on your own schedule. That's really important. Uh, they're supporting, uh, they're partnering with the Blacks and Technology Foundation to provide 1,000 free scholarships to increase uh, educational and professional opportunities for the black community. The first cohort of 2021 includes 150 scholarships. Uh, app applications open this month. So get on in there. Both organizations are looking to increase diversity in tech. Actually, all the employers, all the companies are too, by creating a pipeline of qualified candidates in desirable fields like programming for data science, product management, cloud DevOps, engineering. If you're interested, if you're techie, and I think you are because you're listening to me, this is a great place to go. Get the education that broadens your horizons, gives you the opportunity to really soar. Visit udacity.com slash twit. U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. Udacity. It's like audacity without the A. Udacity.com slash twit. Right now, 50% off through May 30th, 2021. 50% half off. But you have to use the coupon code TWIT, T-W-I-T. The discount will be applied at checkout. That's udacity.com slash twit. Coupon code twit. Thank you, Udacity, for supporting the tech guy. Thank you for supporting the tech guy. Go to that address, udacity.com slash twit. Offer code twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number if you want to talk high tech. Bob's in San Diego. Our next caller. Hi, Bob. Hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm just responding. I I don't know if this will help, but the guy that had the three receivers go bad. Yes. I mean, it's, it could have, like you said, just been bad products, which is very strange. Two of them, let alone three. Yeah, three seems highly unlikely. I feel like there's got to be something going on in there. Right. But a guy that used to come to our store, we were an NAD dealer. We carried Bowers and Wilkins, Paradigm. Stuff yeah, stuff. the best stuff. Yeah, and good. The guy that came to us, Tom Holman. Experiment. Oh, T -H -X. THX. I know who Tom Holman is, yeah. Yes. Well, he used to come to our store before he's, he was stolen away by George from NAD. Yeah. And he told us that they like the crossover of the base at 80 cycles. And I've experimented with some of the, like, like Bowers and Wilkins, the 802 Diamonds is what George Lucas uses. Oh, up. the best. Back oh, man, those are, yep. Well, he's got... And we tried. I tried 60 cycles on some of them. I tried 90, I tried 70. 80. I agree, 99% of the time, 80 cycles sounds better. Because most, most uh, subwoofers, you can actually say where the crossover is. Well, here's how you do it, though. When you have a receiver, yeah. you to, to make it sound best, we go through the on-screen menu, and you call these 802 diamonds, $15,000 speakers, small. <laughs> By calling them small, <laughs> it now it, it, we now set the crossover to eighty. It rolls off the deepest base to right. the, to the amp, and it, the it doesn't bother now, sending it to the to the the the, the, the left right speakers, the stereo speakers. It says, "I'm not going to let them do that eighty hertz or lower." Well, boom, well, boom, well, boom. Yeah, exactly. So what we do is all five of the speakers are now called small, oh, even though they can do deep bass. Yeah, and we roll off the bass to the amp and the main speakers at 80. The amp is now cruising because all the energy of real music is in the deep, deep bass. That's what eats the amplifier a lot. And so you let the subwoofer, which is usually powered, you let it handle that. Exactly. And it's set to roll off the top end of it at 80. And the system is phenomenal. I'm going to do that when I get home. <laughs> I wish I had B&W 802s, but uh, I'll do it with my Elex when I get home. That sounds really interesting. It sounds radically cleaner and it's like, oh, my God, now I have more energy. But more to the point, you think he's overdriving the amps and he's burning them out, making them work too hard. Possibly. I don't know what kind of speakers he's got. Right. You know, I mean, so I, I, I don't know that. That's a really good tip. Do you still work at a stereo store, Bob, or was that the good old days? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah no, we do it. We still do it. What's the name? Give, you, give it a plug. Okay, Sound Company in San Diego. San Diego Sound Company. You just got a free ad. 
Well, on, thank you so much. On you KOGO. Know. Thank you so much. It's really great to talk to you, Bob. Thanks for the okay, tip. You take care. Boy, okay. if Thomas Holman says do it, I'm doing it. He knows sound. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. That's a great tip. I'm right. I just wrote that all down. Take, I'm taking that one home with me. Crossover at 80 hertz, and then the in the in the amp, make it small. Nice. He's been everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. My good friend, my buddy, our traveling man, Johnny Jett, is here. He is uh, the guy who helps us travel better with technology. He joins us every week. His website, johnnyjett.com, features his great newsletters. They're free. His great podcast, it's free. He's got a great YouTube channel with 39 questions. Hello, Johnny Jett. Hello. Speaking of free in my newsletter, by the way, I had a couple of good tips this week. Um, if you've been vaccinated, Krispy Kreme giving you a free donut. Free donut. Day. I don't know if you Every that. day until the end of the year. You will be so fat. Yeah. <laughs> and also, which you might be able to help me on this because I got a lot of reader comments, at Staples and Office Depot are offering, offering free lamination of your vaccine card oh. once you get the second one. Well, but yeah, you, like, you don't want to laminate it f until you get the second one because they stamp it. Right. But what about the booster? Yeah. Maybe don't laminate it. But, I mean, you would think Staples and Office Depot had to have some kind of permission. I love like that. Free lamination. That's hysterical. Yeah, it is. That Or, or uh, you know, maybe uh, Michaels could offer free framing. I'd like to frame it, put it on the wall. Definitely. I mean, By the way, do not Instagram your CDC uh, vaccination record card. Totally. People I mean, copy everyone's it. doing that. Yeah. You don't want to put your birthday and your name out there. It's a bad idea. So. Yeah. I'm that's, showing the that's, reverse, though. That's the back, back of mine. Okay. So, Krispy Kreme, free donut, free donut day. per day. Great promotion because oh, nobody buys just one Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so you go in, you get the first one's free, but then you know. Yeah, th these guys. That was a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant campaign. promotion. They got, they got millions of dollars worth of yeah. ad camp, yeah. ad, ad money free. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't remember if I mentioned last week, but a couple weeks ago, I talked about renting a car and I said that, you know, I, usually when I go to New York City, but I don't rent it when I'm in New York City. I rent it the last day. To get I'm in and out and then get rid of it. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is drive around New York City. Yeah. Plus, you don't want to spend $50 a night for no. parking. Parking. You don't want a car. Two, two cities you don't want a car in, Vegas and New York. I mean, pretty much any big city you don't want a car yeah, except I Los guess. Angeles. Yeah. Or you have Angeles. to have one in L.A. You do. Yeah. Um, I've never taken public transportation in LA. I live here. And no one has. But, but usually when I'm, <laughs> no one has. <laughs> but when I'm in New York, that's all I take. I take the bus. Yeah, I'll the subway is great. Subway. Great way to get around. There's plenty of cabs. There's Uber. Plenty of ways to get around in New York. Yeah, so always consider that. And by the way, my brother was just in Florida this week. I posted a picture on Instagram of, of my dad seeing his uh, grandchild, hugging his grandchild for the first time oh. over a year. Oh, I'm going to cry. Uh, oh, your dad must be, be so happier. happy. Yeah. But my brother made a rookie mistake, so he wanted to extend his stay because he was having such a good time. Yeah. And, you know, the airlines right now are allowing you to change your tickets for free, which is great, as long as or pay the fare difference. But he rented a car and they got him with the rent a car because right now rent a cars are in short supply. And you can, I heard you can't even get one right now on Maui. So wow. you know, wherever you're going, make sure you rent the car, you, you reserve your car in advance and find out what it's going to cost to extend because he did not, he just showed up and it was like $250 extra for two days wow. in Florida. Wow. In Florida, it used to be $7 a day for a car. So wow. keep that in mind. Yes, okay? I shall. Goodness gracious. Um, but also um, speaking of travel and, and, um, and getting out there right now, the airlines are sitting on $10 billion worth of travel credit. That's how, that's how much credit they gave out to people because, you know, the trick was to wait to see if your flight was canceled. If it was, then they had to give you your money back. But if they didn't, they'd give you a travel voucher, which I have a bunch of them because um, some of the flights I were, was scheduled on did not, not cancel. So um, good news is some of the airlines are extending it to March 2022. So, nice. But you need to what you need to do is call the airline and ask them for an extension if they're not automatically doing it because I've heard uh, mixed stories. Also, if one agent is like, sorry, you know, always be polite. This is like the number one tip whenever you speak to a customer service agent, especially with the air airlines. Yeah. 
you know, if someone says it's no, not their it fault. can't happen. Yeah. To, just, just be nice to them, hang up, call back and try another one. Oh, you think that they, they might have some leeway? De definitely. Or ask to speak to a supervisor. Oh, but that always is going to, that, that raises hackles too. You just you have to be polite, but this is this is the way it's always been. I mean, I've been doing this for twenty You're the king. years at least. You know how to negotiate these things. Yes, I know. So I wish we uh, could hire you to do it. <laughs> well, you never we know. Need, we need uh, Jass Johnny Jet as a service. You know, I thought about it. <laughs> also, uh, if you're sitting on these travel credits, you know, you might want to wait. If, you, if you're not have to book right away, see if the flight drops. Although right now, prices are going up almost every week, like 7% airline flights are. Really? Oh, because they're anticipating. Right now, and yeah. didn't, didn't the TSA have a million people every day of the, for the last week? They haven't, they didn't put the numbers out uh, for yesterday. Okay. But yes. It was over 18 days in a row. 18 now, days. I, I think it's been 18 days. So yeah, they're, they're updated. That's not still is below the, the 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 normal peak, but not much, right? Uh, well, let's say on Friday it was 1.4 million. Yeah. Actually, Thursday was 1.4 million. Which Thursday is kind of a slow day. Last year, 2020, it was only 239,000, but in 2019 it was 2.2. Okay, so, so still a little off there. the peak in 2018. Yeah. Or 2019, yeah. 2019. Although yeah. Americans said last week they had their, their busiest revenue week, even bigger than 2019 the same week. So their airlines are bouncing back. And, and speaking of bouncing back, the, the cruises are starting to bounce back because they've been banned, the large cruises who are not um, registered in America, in the United States. You know, they're not, they're, the, the large cruise ships are probably not going to sail from the U.S. maybe until November. We'll see. Or July at the earliest, but the big cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Carnival. Actually, I don't know if Carnival announced it yet, but um, these guys are going to the are going to be based out of the Caribbean or the Bahamas is one of them. But Bahamas is actually not because they're Caribbean. shorter, less expensive, and uh, more likely to to sell. Is that do you think well, the yeah, reason they could start booking and they're going to they're because you don't want to, you don't know what the situation is in in Europe or in Asia. Germany's saying well, we're gonna no, we're gonna, gonna go to they're, lockdown they're, they're, for two they're, weeks. They're, 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 the cruises are going in Europe, some of them, but you have to be European. You, they're, they're yeah, not yeah, exactly. Americans they're right not now. gonna let Americans in. But um, for example, Royal Caribbean's Adventure of the Seas is going out of Nassau. They start June twelfth. That's and a then, big uh, ship. That's a five thousand person ship. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrity Millennium is going out of St. Martin, and they're they're gonna sail around the Caribbean. We so, were thinking of doing a tech guy cruise. Would you go on it if we if we did a tech guy cruise? People are saying cruises are actually going to be the safest place because every single person on board Tested. and all the workers have to be vaccinated. Tested, vac vaccinated. Oh, and quarantined. Oh, good. Okay. But I'm not so, thinking this year. I'm thinking yeah, maybe 2022. Definitely would do it. Wouldn't it be me? fun? I love cruises. I do too. Um, but I definitely would not be going on them unless everyone was vaccinated. Would you go to Alaska with us if we did Alaska? I've been to Alaska many times, never been on a cruise in Alaska, and I've always wanted to. Oh, it's to, fun. So. Yeah, you go by the glaciers and... You get to go to Sitka and places Definitely. that are a little off the beaten path. It's fun. Definitely. And actually, Celebrity Cruises says they're going to uh, sail in Greece in June, which I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh, because I love Greece. Greece is saying they're going to open up on June 14th or 19th. See, I'm waiting until 2022. I, I can Look, I know I want to travel. We didn't travel last year. I want to travel, but I, I'm just going to wait till next year. Yeah, well. Next year. This year, we'll uh, travel. We'll drive around. Thailand. We'll do local stuff. Thailand, they said they're going to open up to Phuket. Vaccinated tourists in Phuket July 1st, no quarantine. Yeah, but we're talking days. next year. We're talking February of next year for Thailand. That'll All be right. fine by then. Well, Unless, JetBlue this, this week launched a, uh, a website called Paisley.com. I love JetBlue. P-A-I-S-L-Y.com. What's Paisley? So this is going to be their separate online travel site. Oh. That's only for their customers that book tickets. So you go to this website, you have to put in your confirmation number oh. and your um, date. And then it's going to offer you hotel rooms, car rentals, and theme park tickets, supposedly Ooh, at a discount. Fun. But they're trying to, you know, cut out the third fun. third party to make some more money. Johnny Jet. Go to johnnyjet.com. He's got all of these stories and lots more. Follow him on the Twitter. He's Johnny Jet there on Instagram. Do you have a TikTok, Johnny? I do have a TikTok, but, you know, I don't really post on TikTok. got to go to All the kids are doing it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thanks, Johnny. Safe travels. I, I can't dance. I can't dance. All you have to do, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is this and then shake your booty. That's it. I can I can do the running man. 
Oh, well, that's a, it's good. You don't have to do the shuffles and all that stuff. And I can do the moonwalk. Oh, I like it. Perfect for Johnny Jet. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Soon, soon. Sydney's a beautiful town. Oh, love Sydney. Uh, Rick on the line is, uh, he's our next caller from Capistrano Beach, California. Another beautiful part of the world. Hey, hello, Rick. Hi, Leo. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Beautiful day. Today. Oh, perfect day, isn't it? Yep. It, re it really is. Yeah. So um, the reason for my call is um, I've been having trouble recently with uh, my, my Wi-Fi router or, or I, may, I guess the modem more likely. I, I lose Wi-Fi, have to unplug it, plug it back in. And so I started, you know, I've had it for a while. The modem is a, uh, I think a Netgear older one. And okay. I'm using an Apple, Apple Airport Express as my router. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, both are both. <laughs> that's old too, and uh, and by the way, no longer made by Apple. So yeah, okay. Yeah, exa exactly. Do you know if it's the modem that you, if you just reset the modem, would that be enough, or do you have to do the router as well? I do them both together, just out of habit. But um, so I don't really. I'm know just curious what's dying. It might, you know, usually it's the router, but uh, I'm just curious. Oh really? I thought it, maybe it was the modem, but I'll I'll check it next. I'll do that next time it goes out. I'll just I'll, you know I'll, it could it even let's yeah just try just doing the router and see if that fixes it. it, it you know that means then the router is worn out. Yeah, uh, yeah. if it's failing a lot. Doing, yeah, so I started doing some homework, looking into you know getting something new, and um, and so now there there are the combination uh, uh, modem routers or uh you can still do them i like to keep them separate for exactly that reason you know if one fails you don't want it all to fail um oh, so well, that's that's my question and you might not even need a new modem that's the other part um you might want a new modem because your cable company may now is it a cable cable modem no it's it's my own i i, I do have uh, my, but is it uh, cable or uh dsl internet yeah, no, I get I get my Wi-Fi through Cox Cable. Cable. So uh, Cox probably is offering Doxis 3.0. You may have an older modem that won't give you all the speed you, you, you're entitled to. So that might be one reason. You definitely want to get a... In fact, if I were buying a new cable modem today, I'd get one that is the Doxis 3.1 standard. Uh, everybody's... All the cable companies will be offering that soon if they aren't already. Uh, so that's one reason you might want to upgrade, not because it's broken, just because it's out of date. Mm -hmm. You should check, look it up, see if it's Doxis 3. Uh, and then you might want to call Cox and say, hey, because uh, <laughs> you're going to have to. Usually you're going to have to tell the cable company, I put new equipment on because they need to recognize the MAC address. So when you do replace the modem, you'll have to do that. Not the router. You don't need to do that for the router usually, just the modem. Uh, again, another reason to keep it separate. Uh, a cable modem, a good cable modem, uh, the Netgear CM1000, that's a Doxis 3.1, about $120, $130. The reason is those don't get out of date so often or need to be replaced so often. The routers, though, technology is changing rapidly, especially Wi-Fi. You know, Wi-Fi 6 is out. We're going to get Wi-Fi 6E next, soon. So you're saying my airport express? It's a little old. It's a little old. I think it, it did 802.11n, so that's Wi-Fi 4. Yeah, it is 802.11n. And doesn't do AX, Wi-Fi 5. Uh, I think I've got my numbers right. They changed it because they realized it's very confusing, this 802 stuff. So they changed it to one one two three four five six, and now they got 6E. So, you know, these guys, they can't. They can never. They can't. <laughs> they try to make it simple, and they can't. They have no way of doing that. Um yeah, I would look at that. How big is your house? How many square feet? Oh, it's it, it's kind of a small. It's it's thirteen hundred square. Oh feet. yeah, then you don't need to get one of these fancy mesh systems, because a single base station should cover the, all of that pretty well. We lose a little bit when we're out on the patio. We spend a lot of time on the patio, and it, it does it does get a little sure. bit iffy out there. Sure. But generally speaking, I think with a new with a new um, it'll motion. it'll be fine. How uh, the yeah. patio not only has distance. Is it the farthest point from the router? It is. Yeah, but it also has to go through walls and stuff. So walls, you know, any any impediment. Believe it or not, Wi-Fi is a, a line of sight technology. It generally works best if you can see the router. Obviously, 
that doesn't work <laughs> for most people. We've got doors, walls, and we've got these big sacks of water called humans that keep passing in front of it. All of those things attenuate the signal. Mount your Wi-Fi when you get your new one. Mount it up as high as you can. So yep. that the humans don't get in, the humans don't mess up with it, mess it up, and uh, try to stay away from anything that's metal, a metal door, metal wall, all of that will block it. Even metal screens in your windows will block it. Uh, and, but any of the more modern ones, I like the ASUS ASUS routers. Uh, they have some pretty sophisticated ones. You, you probably will want to get tri-band, which is two 5G and one 2.4G signals. G, G being gigahertz. Uh, and that way, because the 5 gigahertz don't travel as well, they're less subject to congestion, which means your neighbor's Wi-Fi won't impede on that. So sometimes 5 gigahertz is actually a better choice. It certainly can be faster as well. And then you use I use 2.4 for the slower devices, the IoT devices, or the more distant devices. For instance, your patio, you might say, well, I'm going to use the 2.4 channel. Usually you don't even have to think about it. Most smart routers, including these ASUSes, will automatically pick the right channel and the right uh, frequency for the device. Yeah, so it sounds like I'm kind of outdated here. Oh, yeah. Just a little. Those are great. Look, I had Airport Ex Extreme too. I loved those, or Express. No, Extreme. I had them for had them for years. And Apple made very good gear. They were the most expensive out there for a long time. The funny thing is, uh, Apple stopped making them. I, I think it's almost two years ago. And yeah. now everybody makes routers that are just as expensive. It's like they, Apple was setting a standard for how expensive they should be. Yeah, exactly. So I, I kind of thought that but my, my main concern was whether to get an all in one or um, I would. I never I in general, all in one for any computing is bad because if one thing fails, the whole thing is gone. So in, in general, I don't even I, I've decided not to buy all in one computers anymore. I'm not going to get an iMac when the because I, I, I realize it's limited me to my monitor choices. You want if We want the flexibility of upgrading. When you need to. Absolutely. Yeah. I understand. Can yeah. I ask you one quick question? Certainly. Um, th this is to follow up on last week. The person that called in a, that had the older um, the computer, they needed to get a, um, some uh, some photos off of it. And yes. It really old. She had a Windows 98 PC. And, yeah, and, well, and the... And the similar situation. Yeah. What did you do? Well, I have, a, I have an old, um, speaking of all-in-one, iMac, the... the where the monitor sat on top of the half a basketball deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they looked like a Luxo lamp. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, those are beautiful. Whatever you do, I wish I still had mine. Do not get rid of that. That is a work of art. I, bl I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and I don't... I do. I so I, I don't know what to do with it. Number one, um, <laughs> find a find a place in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my closet. I'm looking at it. I, I know the feeling. Yeah, but honestly, it's too beautiful to get rid of. I wish I still had mine. No, I I totally agree. Unfortunately, the the, the CD burner quit working. Right. Which I think is pretty common, and um, I have a lot of photos on there. Right. I mean, a lot. A lot she of that was her problem too. Yes. And I don't know what to do. Um, I can't remember the vintage of the operating system on there, but it may support what we call target disk mode, which you, you shut down the computer, start it up holding down the T, and see if it goes into target disk mode. You'll see a, float, a bouncing firewire icon. At that point, you can use it as a firewire hard drive. Which means, you know, you don't have FireWire in any current computer, but you can get a FireWire to USB adapter and then copy it over very, very rapidly, very easily. Wow, that is cool. I, I don't remember if that vintage supported target disk mode, but I'd at least try that. Otherwise, I don't know what to do. <laughs> the Tech Eye Show brought to you this week by Conga. C-O-N-G-A. Are you ready to evolve operations, streamline workflows, create and deliver digital documents, quotes, and contracts more effectively? You can. With Conga, Conga helps businesses digitally transform their commercial operations. Other companies may be stepping away from opportunities like this, but Conga believes now is the perfect time to keep moving forward. Those manual processes that everybody once conducted in person in an office, <laughs> that came to an abrupt halt. 
a year ago, right? Businesses found themselves limiting contact, working from home. Now, I know we're going to go back eventually to our offices, but this has really stimulated the transformation, the digital transformation we've been waiting for. It's catapulted from an aspiration to really a non-negotiable requirement. And Conga offers the most robust solution for digital document process and commercial excellence transformation. Their end-to-end -end digital document transformation suite can help you automate and optimize your daily documents and contracts. You'll save time. You'll close business faster. You'll empower your teams to work with more purpose. That's what T-Mobile for Business did. T-Mobile's sales reps didn't have that necessary key capability in their sales proposals. Customers literally couldn't see the proposals in writing or they had to create additional documents for the customer. That, that was time-consuming. And most importantly, it added errors, right, because you're manually entering this stuff in. With Conga Composer, T-Mobile's sales promotions have never been clearer, easier, or more beautiful. What once took 24 to 48 hours to file a case and request a ticket, it's now instantaneous. Sales teams now avoid multiple systems. T-Mobile... And this is the bottom line, has seen a 25% increase in user adoption, and they're getting paid faster. Conga Composer is a great way to power up consumer engagement. With Composer, digital document generation from Salesforce is quick and error-free every time. Not just Salesforce, really. Any CRM or system of record, accurate because there are no errors. It's pulling directly from the source of truth. You create beautiful templated documents directly from Salesforce. You can automate your templated documents so they always have the right data built in. You can deliver those documents in a variety of formats by almost any method. Store them where you want. There's some nice advanced features for Conga Composer Enterprise. You'll get real-time document notifications that reveal recipient engagement and make follow-up a breeze. There's Conga Batch that consolidates schedules and delivers the documents you create with Composer. You get to choose how you want to launch and send, whether automatically or on demand, and you can even do so for multiple documents at once. And then the Conga Trigger, which is really great, got a new client, you put it in Salesforce, it automatically creates and distributes digital documents directly from Composer and Salesforce. No button to click, it just does it, because you know you're going to need it. Conga. C-O-N-G-A. They're committed to improving how people do business at a much larger scale. We know we're all in this together. And the digital transformation is going to happen. It had to happen. Now it's going to happen. So experience Conga's new brand. Have some fun. There's a nice trivia contest you can participate in at conga.com slash twit. Share it on social. Conga will take the results and donate it to a charity supporting COVID relief efforts. That's nice. It's Conga, C-O-N-G-A, conga.com slash twit. Thank you, Conga, for supporting the tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here. It's tech guy time. Yes, that nerd on the radio, that's me. <sighs> Computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We talk about smartphones, smart watches. Dick D. Bartolo, our giz whiz, will come up with a goofy gadget at the end of this hour. Of course, your calls are really what make this show take off. 8888 ask Leo. Otherwise, it'd be me talking for three hours. No one wants to hear that. 888 827 5536. Uh, if you hear something on the show and you say, well, I need to know more about that, the uh, website is free. It's open, no signups or anything. It's, it's really there for your reference. TechGuyLabs.com. We divide the site into shows and then each show into hours one two and three each hour into segments one two three and four shows. it should be pretty easy to find the thing you heard uh of course you need to know this is episode 1782 for march 27th 2021 knowing that all will be revealed we even put audio and video from the show up after the fact so that way you can you can read it but you can also listen if you want or or watch uh, techguylabs.com. Fred's on the line from Yorba Linda, California, our next caller. Hi, Fred. Hello, sir. Long-time listener. Love your show. Thank um, you. Glad to have I'm you. I'm not kind of a low-tech guy. Okay. Um, I understand about 25% of what goes on and retain about three. Um, <laughs> That's good. That's more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I, I, take, I take a lot of your advice. You know, I listen to your show on... Um, 
got a Chromebook. I was a Windows user for years. Um, I Thank bought an OLED about three years ago. Nice. Just under three years. Nice. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful picture. Yeah, aren't they incredible? Yeah. Yeah, but now on the right-hand corner, it says very clearly in green forever, good morning, uh, uh, morning news. And on the left side... Yeah has uh, the time. so um, This is a problem with OLEDs. In general, there are ways to get rid of that. You might look in your menu to see if there's a way uh, to get rid of a persistent... Pixel. I, it I didn't work. Pixel repair. Yeah. And everybody everybody I talk to is like, that's a lot of money to fix. I guess they got to replace the whole thing. So Yeah, the whole panel has to be replaced if none of the pixel repair programs uh, work. Although... Uh, there are things you can do that are outside uh, the built-in pixel repair. Um, if you look online, you'll see there are, you know, there are images you can put up or, you know, a black screen and then a white screen. There are ways perhaps to get that to go away. That's, of course, burn-in. And it, you, you remember in the old days of CRTs, TV tubes, it was a real problem. Those were not repairable. OLEDs, to, to a great degree, can be recovered. So they, they may or may not be permanent. Um, well, but that's why you got to be careful with any any OLED, uh, just like with the CRT, not to leave an image up. It's really a problem mostly for gamers uh, that have game things that stay up and they play all night and it burns in. You must have had that channel on all the time. My wife turns that channel on and leaves it on like, all, yeah. you know, the morning news is on from 5 to 11. So, you know, it's permanently More there. modern OLEDs. Avoid that by pixel shifting subtly behind the scenes. You don't see them doing it, but they move the pixels around. Uh, well, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna replace it. You know, okay. the cost of repairing it. Oh yeah, and the and prices have gone and, down. The screens are better now than ever, so it's worth it. Yep. And anything tech wise, you know, anything you start researching. Like I said, I'm not a geek, and the more you research, the more confusing it is. So I've kind of settled into that. Samsung Q, the new one, the 2021 uh, QLED with the mini uh, LED, uh, mini LEDs. Yeah, it seems to, it seems to be a beautiful picture. A um, little pricey, but um, it's not as good as the OLED. Uh, QLED is an LCD, so the uh, QLED means that they have. Uh, this a special they call them quantum dots that's what the Q is I often think that Samsung understands how close Q is to O and they it's a little uh, tricksy to say it's a QLED not an OLED different technology you're looking at your screen it's emitting directly the pixels each pixel lights itself up with an OLED uh, an LCD is uh, has shutters and a backlight but the backlight on this Samsung uh, and that's that micro LED is yeah. is it's what we call full array local dimming, which means that instead of the old days of an LCD where there'd be a couple of fluorescent bulbs and there were bright spots and dark spots, they have a fairly uniform spread of uh, LEDs, small LEDs behind the screen, and they can dim and brighten regions of that, which helps give the LCD. Uh, a, a dynamic range closer to OLED, where the the dark blacks are really black, and the this was always a problem in the old days with LCDs. You couldn't get the deep blacks because it, you couldn't darken it enough. With his full array local dimming, it's pretty close. It won't be as good as your OLED. It will be brighter than your OLED, and it won't be yeah. prone to burn in. Yeah. So your wife can watch your show, uh, and it won't be burned in. <laughs> so that's good. Um, yeah, it's funny we're. Uh, I'm in a bright room, and a truck drives by a, a Samsung truck, and says, uh, "It said on the side, no, it was a uh, no burn in." Samsung. Yeah, yeah. So he said, "Hey, we're getting that, honey. <laughs> What's that one? I want that one." Yeah, I think I ha I have uh, several OLEDs and have not ever had burn in, but you know, I th there's a screensaver on it. Uh, it's doing pixel shifting. You might try putting it as if you can a bright white background on that thing for a long period of time. It might be that you can recover it. Uh, uh, it it's pretty unusual that it will have a permanent burn in. It can, but it's just it's not that likely. So, um, so and LG LG themselves offered no no advice. You know, they unplug it, plug it back. You know, they uh, a lot of uh, nonsensical information you know yeah. from lg 
Yeah. So, um, no, I, I will try that, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, and then if you like that Samsung, it's a it is a great TV and has some advantages over an older OLED. You know, they have that that the smart TV is built in, so there's Roku and other things. Samsung. Uh, I'm not sure, but I suspect the one you're looking at has 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, so for some yeah, things, yeah, yeah that's going to give you a really uh, nice. Most, you know, most of the signals you're getting are not that, but for gaming or uh, for, I think some streaming services might offer 120 hertz. No broadcast signal does, but uh, you might find some things that offer 120 hertz, and that will look, especially for sports. If you're watching the F1 race tomorrow, 120 hertz would be really nice. Be really nice, yeah, because well, those cars are going fast. Time, I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank yeah, I'm so sorry much. that happened. It's kind of a bummer. Uh, it is. It is. You know, there are a couple of downsides to OLED. Burn is certainly one of them, and it can be permanent. I'm not saying it's it, it's not permanent. It can be permanent. Uh, we used to have problems with older OLEDs with the purple color kind of fading. So you get an uneven uh, color. I think they've pretty much fixed that. And then, of course, it's price. It's a it's a more expensive technology than LCD. Nowadays, you can get that Samsung for under a thousand bucks. I mean, the prices are really, really good for uh, sixty five. So it's kind of annoying that these uh, news channels leave that same. They call it a bug. That same bug up all the time in the same spot. It'd be nice if they moved it around. It really would be. There's, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, try a white screen. It might take a while. Might take days. But try just as a, a bright white screen. The idea is to kind of even out the burn in across the uh, across the pixels. It might end up being a little dimmer. I think that they I think they've pretty much fixed that in modern OLEDs. At least I haven't had that experience. I'm sorry that happened. That's that kind of stinks. Yeah, it's no good. Nice TV. Not working anymore. Bummer man. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo. Elaine is on the line from El Segundo. Hello, Elaine. Hi. Welcome. What can Hi. I do for you? Um, I had the AT&T technician come out yesterday to put a landline in for me in one of the, my bedrooms that didn't have one yet. Okay. And I showed him the phone. I was wanting to hook up to it. It was a rotary from a long time ago, and it was refurbished and everything, so... Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, that's a cool phone. So he spent two and a half hours wiring the house or whatever he was doing. I don't know. He went underneath and looked at my modem, and finally he plugged it in, and we got a dial tone, and he drove off. And then today I, I um, tried to make a phone call, and it wouldn't dial out. So uh, a couple of questions. You're, is it plain old telephone service? Is it landline, or do you get it from your Internet service provider? Is AT&T giving you a landline? It's AT and T U versus an I. Oh, yeah, that's different. What's that mean? That's oh. different. So that's an internet service provider. Is it a princess phone? Does it light up? Is it one of those rotaries? No, it's just a regular dial phone. Old timey. No, it, it even looks. It's between a princess and something else. I don't know. It's okay. Very unusual, but it was. Um, it still works. And does it light up those? Does it? Does it? No. It, no, but it just it, it works. And are you getting a dial tone at all? Yes, yes. So you're getting dial tone, but you can't dial out. Right. So it's probably a call to AT&T to make sure that you have an outbound calling plan. What? Well, because um, you, you can actually get a phone <laughs> that has a dial tone and rings, but you can't call anybody. In fact, right. that's a phone I uh, a, a lot of us have because... Uh, for a variety of reasons, you might want inbound stuff, but you don't want anybody to make any calls. So that's possible. Were you able to make a call yesterday? No, I did, we didn't try that. Yeah, one. you didn't try that one. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize I needed that. Okay. And the dial tone, it's a normal, huh? It's not right. a ding, 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 or anything like that. It's right. a normal, huh? Okay. 
Uh, it's not one of those phones that goes. No, it's not that either. Okay, so it has it has it it plays tones down the line, right? So that would be one possible thing. You need a phone that can do DTMF. It can do it can do beeps. Not. Yeah, but I love this phone. I. I know, but. Refurbished just so I could do this. Oh, I know, but just for it. So does it have a dial? Yeah, it actually has a it dial. It doesn't have buttons. It has a dial. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> here's the problem. The way those old phones worked is that dial had switches underneath it. You you may remember this because when you dial a number, it would go chick, 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 all the way back, right? And then you do it again, chick, chick, chick. So, it would do a number of switches depending on which hole you use that's why the zero was a long way to go right one was fast it was one switch two was so those switches were interpreted by the old telephone system as numbers but i'm almost okay. sure your at&t uverse has no idea right <laughs> what those chick 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 chicks things are it doesn't sound like anything you you can get a dial a DTMF generator. Uh, you probably can get an app that'll do it. You want to generate DTMF tones, and if you played that down the line, it might actually dial the phone. But that's what it, that's what the that's what the circuit needs to hear is beep boop boop. Remember when you they used to call them touch tones beep boop. So that's what it needs to hear. It can't. It doesn't understand the chick 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 chick. So I can't call AT and T and say I, I need a new phone service just for this one phone. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You could go to Radio. Oh, you can't go to Radio Shack either. You could go somewhere and buy. You know, Best Buy has what look like old fashioned phones, but they send the the, the tones down instead of the clicks down. Um, how could we convert that phone? There's gonna be a way to make that phone. Oh. I was thinking of changing services. Is there a company that does? No, nobody does DTMF. Oh. <laughs> I mean, uh, everybody does DTMF. Nobody does the old. <laughs> Let me think about this. I'm sure you. Sp so you love this old phone because it reminds yeah, you of, of your youth. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that old, though. <laughs> oh, well, it would, it would remind me of my youth because I, I remember those old phones. That's how I know this. Um, but that's interesting. Uh there are companies, so you brought it to somebody to get it restored. Yeah, I mailed it back to South Carolina, and I live in Los Angeles, so yeah. So there are companies that will take these old phones and put inside the box a converter for DTMF. Oh, I should have done that, huh? Yeah. It's called a pulse-to-tone converter. You could probably, in fact, if you go to oldphoneworks.com, they sell... A pulse to phone converter for fifty bucks. Oh, we have confirmed this unit will not work with AT and T Uverse. Oh man! <laughs> no man! The guy didn't tell me that though. After I he didn't know. Are you kidding? That guy never heard of the old pulse tile tones. Um, isn't this funny? So this company, Old Phone Works, actually sells a box that will convert the pulse tone. To DTMF, which is the tones. But they said, we confirm this doesn't work with Magic Jack and AT&T U-verse. <laughs> so, which is, oh, you, no. this is exactly what you got. Um, so that device was... No, <laughs> no. Let's figure out a way. Let's figure out a way. So, Uma, let's try this. Uma, I think... Somebody in the chat room saying Uma makes a uh, tone to a, a pulse to tone converter. Let's see. That's what you're going to look for: pulse to tone converter. So your phone is doing pulses, and when you want, beep, boop, 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 boop. so yeah, Uma. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Now, okay, this is from a company called Alldav. A l l d a v dot com. But I, I can't promise. I mean, if the one from old phones didn't work, maybe this one doesn't either. But that's what you need, and that's what's going on. I would call the company that did the conversion and say, hey, and maybe they can help.
Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I'm sorry, Diane. Tell me about this phone. What makes it so special for you? What does it look I like? I don't want to. <laughs> Let's see. It's. Um... Oh, God. It came right after the princess phone. Okay, so it's the long style with the with the cradle, uh, the dials under the cradle, under the. Under no, the... It, it's gosh, it's so hard to explain. It, I wish I could text you a picture of it. There's, it's gold, a lot of gold, and it has a. a uh, did you say a cradle? Yeah, it has a cradle that looks like um, a gold post. Oh, the old fashioned. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only oh, it's not. It's not those old black ones. It's a different one. It looks very. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I know exactly what you mean. So it's kind of like a squarish box with the dial on it, and it's got no. the gold posts and the and the and the heads handset goes into the gold posts. Right, but the, yeah. it isn't square. It's not square. It's round. It's round. Feminine. Sounds beautiful. I think I got it as a teenager. So yeah, it's, it's feminine. It's your old phone. Your kid when you were a kid. <laughs> So yeah. I would call the company, the North Carolina company, and say, oh, crap, this thing does tone. I'm on Uverse. Do you know, uh, is, do you sell or is there a way that I can convert this thing does pulses? I mean, I can convert the pulse to tone. They should have, to be honest, when they did the, con the refurb and conversion. Well, well, no, what I was doing was last summer I had these, these three phones, this one and a Mickey Mouse phone and a Donald Duck phone. <laughs> Aww. Have you seen those? Yeah. yeah. So my mom gave me those. Aww. And, I mean, when she passed away. So I sent all three of them there because they were kind of like a broken handle. It was most cosmetic that was broken. So they fixed the outside. I don't know if they do anything to the inside, do they? I don't know. Um, <laughs> they would need to if you wanted to work with uh, your system. They'd need to put a little converter in there. The problem is we need to find... Let me, let me try this. Pulse... I'm I'm googling pulse to tone converter, and but then I'm gonna add ATT Uverse. Here we go. I've pulse to tone converter for ATT Uverse. Um. Okay, PioneerShop.com. Eighty dollars. Sorry. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes. But if you go to Pioneer Dash Shop, S H O P P E, old school man. Mm -hmm. Or you could just Google, as I did, Pulse to Tone Converter for ATT U-verse. <coughs> they have one that they say works with ATT U-verse. <coughs> so that's what you need, because U-verse is apparently finicky. So I just couldn't use a different phone company, because I'm ready to... No, <laughs> don't, no, no. This thing is a box that will go on the line, so you won't even see it. It's under the bed or whatever. And your old, old school, beautiful phone goes... The wire from that goes into the box, and then there's another wire coming out that goes into the jack on the wall that that nice man put in. Oh, no, I'm surprised he didn't tell me that, but okay. He didn't know. He should have made a test call. I told you. I told him it was a rotary, and he didn't, he didn't know. He was a <laughs> he was a nitwit. He was too young. He was too young. He doesn't remember that. Because <laughs> there are dial phones that make tones. It, it's a kind of a hack. Uh -huh. Here's another one. Dial, uh, Dialgizmo.com that also they say it works with AT&T U-verse. It looks just like the other one from the Shopee. Um, okay. supports, supports all standard rotary phones and it converts it to DTMF compatible with modern VoIP equipment. You have modern VoIP equipment. That's the problem. Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, I know. That's what it is. I don't see a price on this thing. I just... They, they sell it at dialgizmo.com. Okay. Buy online. Let me see. I just want to see. 40 bucks. Well, that's half the other one. So dialgizmo.com is where you want to go. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. That's a bye, great bye. question. All right. Bye. Bye. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Love that last question. So this is what the old dial phones uh, sounded like. This is a nice short three-minute video explaining. Oh the gosh, you don't need to explain so this to me. I just want to see it. It's on YouTube. Time. So if I oh my goodness, the this, the this is ridiculous. There we go. We'll you hear that? Five in the exchange. Let's do that again. If I dial five pulses. You hear that? Click, 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 click. That, and this is a YouTube video, old pulse dialing telephones versus push button tone dialing. DTMF, the dual tone something something, is uh, the modern tone system. 
even that's not, you know, nowadays with cell phones. Remember it's in the early days, cell phones would make those tones? They don't need those tones. <laughs> that's just, that was to make you feel at home. Uh, they don't bother anymore going beep, 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 beep. Most, uh, most cell phones don't. So I found, actually the chat room uh, found a website that sells a box that will convert that chick, 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 chick to tones that will work on VoIP. And that's the problem, uh, at t u versus a voiceover internet. And so it's, a, it's, it's even differenter. <laughs> but they make a little $40 box. It's dialgizmo.com. Never tried it. Um you know, make sure they uh, accept returns in case it doesn't work. But uh, dialgizmo.com, you put that on the ch -ch 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 phone and then you can put it on your AT&T U-verse. It's a little box. You, it's got a phone jack. So you put that on the phone jack on the wall. And apparently it uh, you'd even will do the pound sign and all the other stuff. What a What a world. What a world. Even supports speed dial. It's actually kind of cool. 40 bucks. I'm sure you spent more than that reconditioning these old phones. Next time, when you recondition it, say, and I'll have to put it on a at t U-verse, but they probably have a thing they can build into it, you know, as part of the, the whole thing. Trip down memory lane. That was kind of fun. Greg's on the line. Our next caller from uh, Anaheim. Hello, Greg. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, Monsieur Cotrois. <laughs> Leo, yes, sir. My, uh, grill's, my grill's name is I'm too dog on hard to clean. <laughs> we were, I was talking off the air. Uh, I'm I'm making a brisket uh, during the show. I have one of those uh, remote control pellet smokers, and uh, I you have to name it when you set up the software. So I named mine Baby Got Brisket. But I think too hard to clean is probably a good way to appropriate name. Yeah, yeah. I've got two really important questions to ask you. But uh, also, uh, you know, uh, Alexander and Ma Bell are rolling in their graves after listening to that call with you, uh, making their dial tones. <laughs> it's so it's so funny. You know, I bet you there's hackers out there that can imitate those sounds. Well, there's. Uh, if you ever listen to the wall, there's a great section where there's a phone call. That yes. Roger Waters. Put in the wall, and it's. It's yep. technically a phone call that he got, or uh, he sent to his wife. He was calling his wife. He was out of town, and a man answered. And it's it's actually true that she was basically cheating on oh him. Oh, my God. And the phone call is a real phone call, and that's why the guy hangs up after the second Oh, my call. God. John, did you know, or my studio manager is a massive Wall fan. We've seen the Wall twice now in the concert. And, and, and John... John knows it, but the jo but John says it's a real story. But the audio was recreated for the album. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, before you let me go, I got two questions to ask you. My second one is the one I, I called about. But the first one is my brother-in-law's got a chip on his shoulder. Is there anything you can do about that? <laughs> I don't do that kind of chips. <laughs> okay. What kind of chip is that? You know, I once interviewed. <laughs> Uh, uh, James West from the Wild Wild West. Do you remember? Do you remember that guy? Uh, what was his name? And I've tried now. I've, I've forgotten his name, but he was famously pugnacious actor. And uh, Robert, Conrad. Robert Conrad. And he he did a series of commercials for a battery company. Do you remember these? Rayovac or Energy? My shoulder. Yeah, he's, he put the battery in his shoulder. He said, "Knock it off." Yeah. So uh, when I interviewed him, he did that. <laughs> I didn't knock it off. The guy, he was he was tall but wiry. I mean, short but wiry. Huh? His partner in the Wild Wild West. Artemis Gordon. Was, yeah, he was the uh, voice uh, on the movie uh, Dial M for Murder. I didn't know that. Speaking of phone calls, Ross Martin. One of the, right. one of the greats. Good, good for you. Okay, now, Leo, my real important question. I'm having a problem. With Dish Network, I have a HD CP message that comes up when uh, I a movie. Copy protection. How do, how do I get rid of that stupid? CP? So, thank you, Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, look, I understand Hollywood. You know they're upset. People steal their movies. Blah blah blah. 
So they insisted that uh, we put this high def content or high bandwidth digital content production protection into all of our gear, HDCP, and the gear won't play a Blu-ray or DVD or even streaming movies unless everything is HDCP compliant, including your cable, like your HDMI cable, all of that. So if you're getting that, you can get it in error. But if you're getting that, your dish is obviously HDCP compliant. So make sure that the cable that you're using, the, the HDMI cable is, the TV you're playing it back on, the device you're playing it back on, whatever it's com connected to, all of that has to be compliant. Here's the funny thing. Any pirate worth his salt, me matey, knows how to get around this. This is absolutely useless for copy protection. Absolutely useless. All it does is make normal, honest people nuts. I know. Leo, if I reboot the Harper, my DVD, DVR with, with a dish, and have it reboot, takes about seven minutes. Oh, God. I can, turn on a, I can turn on a 4K movie, and it will play. Yes. But I can't, I can't do it again until I reboot the Harper each time to watch a 4K content movie. So I'm looking at a thread... On the Satellite Guys website, this was an update that came out to the hopper last fall that caused exactly what you're describing, intermittent HDCP errors. Look for a firmware update on your uh, on your dish box. They've done, I, I have, I've had two new boxes installed. Ugh. They've upgraded the firmware. Ugh. 200 gigabytes of bandwidth now coming into my home through Spectrum. I replaced two HDMI cables. One was a $80 monster cable. Then I had a cable I've been just storing in my room. I tried that. And the only thing I can do to watch a 4K movie is reboot the box. I can start a movie, watch you it. you got to call Dish. This is, a, this is a firmware issue with the Dish. I it, call Dish. And they deny it? Every day. Yeah, every they say there's day. no fix. Well, they replaced the box twice, and they have no idea. And when I tell them i got to reboot the box to get the movie to play, they go, gee, we've never heard of that. Uh, I've got a splitter. I've got a splitter. If, if it plays, that means everything on the chain is compliant. If it plays at all, it means right. there's something wrong in the hopper. That's right. Now, if you research a little bit farther, you'll find that some people recommend a splitter, which I have coming to my house via delivery tomorrow and i'm hoping that inline splitter will bypass the cp oh yeah by the way you know those pirates army <laughs> matey <laughs> if we if we actually discovered this accidentally. There are a great many hdmi splitters and adapters sold on amazon they're not labeled as hdcp content remove you know split uh, right, uh deep unprotectors but almost all of them sold from china do that yeah i know and i had i had a box 15 years ago that would bypass the so frustrating thing. yeah so uh, t if it were me i'd get rid of the dish to be honest with you Arr! take that e pirates leo laporte the tech guy i'm sorry that happened to you that stinks but sounds like you actually all along knew that this was an issue, right? Well, Leo, this is what happened. I've been with Dish 27 years. They have a input for the back of their DVR where you can use an external hard drive to right. store right. excessive equipment. Well, I've got 15 oh. external hard drives. Oh, so you can't over, give up the Dish. <laughs> it's over 7,000. Seven because only the Dish can read those drives. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. On watching that through anything else but their box. They got you locked, stuck man. With, You're locked yeah, in. I'm stuck with dish. You're guaranteed. The splitter works. Uh, yeah, if you get the right one, I wish they would say, but they obviously are never going to say. But John, don't most of the splitters? What was that? What was that HDM HDCP content stripping device? It's just a splitter. A lot of it. Well, you don't have to go get it, but a lot of them work, right? Even though they don't say on the box. Yeah. Well, they they're, a $20 splitter. Yeah, they're cheap Chinese splitters. And, oh, lo and behold, they take out content protection. Oh. Put it on the, put it on the show notes because I can't figure out on your website how to ask a question. I look you can't ask a question on the website. 
because there's no one to answer it. I, I, if okay. I sp if I, if I start taking questions via email or website, I would be doing that all day. And all right, one other thing. the yes. only way to ask a question is on the radio show because that's what I'm doing here. Okay. Well, you need you need a five day a week radio show. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Tell, tell Scott, I purchased a forty eight hundred dollar Samsung eighty five inch Q and eighty, and the week after I purchased this TV set, he starts telling uh, you during his segment to get it. No. How important, how, how upgrading the new system's coming out. Don't buy a TV now. Oh! Next, next no. year, you're going to be able to buy a macro. No. Dog. <laughs> and I'm thinking, thanks, Scott. Do you, like, do you like the TV? Do you like it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great TV, TV, right? It's, it's a beautiful it's TV. Watch. Yeah. It's, yeah. You're fine. Okay. Don't worry about next year. It, you know, I just bought a hellaciously expensive gaming PC. Next day, I'm reading, oh, yeah, that chip, uh, you're going to definitely want to wait for the next one. It's just, it's life. That's called technology, right? Well, that's like marrying, that's like marrying your next-door neighbor, but she had a, a sister that didn't live with them that showed up two days later. Oh, yeah. Married, yeah. She's a lot better looking. Yeah, oh. my, my father, my mother and father married. He was dating her sister, and then he met her and went, well, <laughs> who are you? It's just a party. It's just yeah. A, it's just a party. It makes you feel really happy. It makes you feel good. I agree. That's Dick D. Bartolo. We like to play disco because he likes to dance in for his appearance. He is. I do all the time. <laughs> I break my neck on these big <laughs> boots, but it's okay. He's wearing his disco boots. He is, of course, the legendary uh, member of wow. the usual cast of idiots at Mad Magazine. <clears throat> oh, you are legendary, honestly. Um, well, thank you. I, I'll never forget how excited I was to meet you because I grew up reading you. Uh, and now I'm an old man, so I don't know how you're still around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how By you do By the way. It. Yeah? How do I sound thanks to you? Oh, you got a new thing? Uh, I got two new things. So, Leo, this is like the new Disneyland. Oh, well, Not only that, but yeah. I think I'm going to replace the phone, the rotary phone. After that <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you? Yes, I, oh, my God. I, I have four of those in the warehouse. Oh, yeah. You can't use them. No, not at all. But they, I go in and they're sitting on a shelf and I go, oh, those are nice. They're I really, really cool. I re I'll never forget. Go, I was on a cruise with Steve Wozniak, the founder oh, he, of, uh, of uh, Apple Computer, the designer of the first Apple II. And Waz is a, nut, a, a total geek. He, you know, he he would do shows at the at the dinner table every night. He brought lasers one evening, and he's doing lasers and stuff. So he he first time first uh, first night out, sit down at the dinner table. He comes, he goes, <clears throat> puts down a big rotary phone, one of those old black Western electric rotary phones. Boom, puts it on the table. He says, "My cell phone." I said, "No, it's not." He says, "Yeah, watch." He picks it up. He can dial. It's got a cell phone built into it, oh battery powered. And he can oh he can gosh. talk on it on the phone. The dial works. Everything works. He, he's on. Does he still have the big uh, the watch, watch with, with the, the Nixie tubes? tubes? Yeah, you yeah. bet. Yeah, no, he's a character. Anyway, he he is. he is nothing compared to this Gizmo Wizard. This guy, Dick D. Bartolo, he's got it all. He's Mister Gizmo. I, I do have a lot of uh, El Crapo, but <laughs> spurred on by you generously buying me the oh, yeah, uh, what? Scarlet 2i2 third generation Focusrite. Uh, yeah, that's your uh, audio interface. interface so we can yep. hear you. What else did I you get? I decided to get a new monitor. Now, actually, uh, my old monitor crapping out decided it for me okay <laughs> yes <laughs> you know i did not know how inexpensive monitors oh they've become. really tumbled okay. yes so the one that failed and i looked it up i couldn't believe it i've had it for 12 years it's an hp 24 inch that you could swivel oh i remember those days yeah remember portrait and, and landscape yeah yes the only th problem was they gave you a lot of uh, usb slots in the side and if you plug things <laughs> in, when you <laughs> on the other cables <laughs> <to> go <laughs> you had to rip out okay yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i look up and the replacement for that 
is $129. Amazing. So I decide, wait a minute. I can't just buy the same thing. So I, I say, let me go look. So I find an ultra wide. Yeah. Okay. IPS. That's good. HDR. In plane switching. HDR. Scott, good. Yeah. All right. You can watch because movies on Scott, it. Uh, yeah. Scott Wilkinson. Yeah. yeah. Um, free sync. I have no what that is. That's good I, if you I, go I gaming. No, that's for gaming. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I was waiting for a free sync to show no, up. No sinks. Nothing no, up, nothing. So everything but the kitchen sink in this case. <laughs> everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah. Okay. $224. Wow. How big? That's the real 29. Number. 29, 29 inches. inches. Isn't that 29 nice? 29 inches. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, resolution is two, uh, uh, 2560 by 1080. So that's pretty good. Right? 25, yeah, so that's a HD, HDR. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, and for some bizarre reason, thank God I read all the reviews. They said if you buy the black monitor, the black version, yeah. there are no speakers. Oh. If, if you put, if you... See, the I wouldn't version. care because I never use the monitors speakers. You know, Leah, I only like it so that if something is broken oh, down, then you can hear. I yeah. know. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. And besides, it turns out that it's white because the back of the monitor is white. The front is black, like everything else. Yeah. Uh, so I got the one that has uh, tw uh, two seven watt speakers with audio max M A X X. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I, I'm thinking <laughs> you got I, a lot of buzzwords. You don't know what they are. No, I, I don't know. No, I, I said it's H D R. It's uh, I O U. It's C O D. <laughs> I have. I have. Oh, it's it's uh, S R G B. Oh, did you know? 99% color gamut? Ooh. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, yeah I, have that, I couldn't afford the is. extra 1%. Yeah, that's nice. So, but what, uh, how much was it again? $224. Amazing. Yeah, there's no re And you know, uh, this is one of the reasons I was talking about this earlier. I don't I don't want to get another iMac or any all-in-one. I I the thing is you can get better and better monitors faster than you're going to get a new computer. So why tie the computer to the monitor? Get a computer no. and get a separate monitor. Because you might you want know, to You mentioned that years ago, and yeah. and I I I didn't take totally my own advice. I didn't take my own advice. That's a problem. <laughs> I did. I got I IMAX did. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So my new so, my new monitor. Okay. Oh, he, oh he's gonna. This is gonna be okay. A little more inches. expensive. <laughs> 200 inches, not speakers, Dick. It's a live orchestra. A little, a little more expensive. In the bass. It's 55 inches. So This is a monitor? Yeah. So it's, t it's the size of a TV, but it, the width of it is about uh, across, about 48 inches. And then mm -hmm. it's about 30 inches tall. So it's like, it's like stacked two of those ultra-wide monitors they sell now. But it's not curved. HDR, 120 hertz. It's got the free sync. It's got the it's got all those bolt. It's OLED. You, you don't even oh want to know God. how much I spent for it. It's a gaming monitor. Oh my God! I think I'm never going to leave my office again. Oh, it's in the oh, that's the office. My home office. Yeah. Oh, your home office. My okay. home office. I got okay. a fireplace in there. I got a little feeding tube. <laughs> that's all I need. I'm set. Yeah, I know. And you have to say, hey, Lisa, at the end of the screen at your end, can you read <laughs> me that? <laughs> you know, this is. I, I'm embarrassed to admit it. But it was a little one-upmanship. She got a 49-inch Dell monitor, oh. curved, <laughs> right? It's very space age. And she's loving it. And I've got this little iMac, and I'm 27-inch. And I'm like, oh, oh. So finally, I decided to one-up her. Okay. It's a little, uh, little uh, rivalry in the family. This is not going to end well. She, uh, no, She's already looked at it and said, oh, <laughs> I I might want a 60-inch monitor in that case. Mm, mm, it's mm, not going to mm. end well. So the link to the LG 29WN600 Ultra Wide Screen Monitor that Dick just bought and is loving, yes? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely do. That's uh, on gizwiz.biz. That's his website, G-I-Z-W-I-Z. -I -I -Z. He's the gizmo wizard, get it? Dot B-I-Z, because I guess dot com was taken. I don't know. Gizwiz.biz, because it's clever. Then click the button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy, and you'll see a link. But while you're there, you should also click the button that says, what the heck is it? Because it's a close... Oh. It's a close-up. Uh -huh. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh. That looks like a little thumb, thumb thing there, and this is clearly an electric motor. 
I'm thinking it's a electric thumb winder. But uh, just that's my thought. What is it? Do you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a there's a 19. I'm sorry, 18 autographed copies of Mad Magazine at stake here. Um, six for the the right answer. People never get it right. Twelve for the cute silly answer, and you've got till uh, the end of April. End of April. Yeah. It's a fun game to play. It's just for fun. And of course, they're autographed. Who autographs those ma Mad Magazine? Uh, I have Dennis uh, forge my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I personally signed. Personally them all. signed. I know. I've got one. See right here, and he does. Oh, he signs thank it. you. He thank writes you. madly on it, and the Mad Mag. It's. I do everything. Yes, just. I like cherish that. this. I cherish well, this. I have to get you some newer ones. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you, buddy. Have I'll a, see you next week. Have, have a great meal. I, I was watching you yeah. cook by a brisket your time. App. Brisket time. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.